What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Another Friday, another episode of Why Are We Bullish? I'm feeling good today. I'm ready for this. This is going to be a, a good time here. We've got a killer panel. A uh, bunch of gentlemen uh, in and around Bridge to Bitcoin will be chatting about what they're up to and everything. Uh, but we've got plenty of reasons to be bullish. And, and I'm excited. There's some, some fun stuff coming up in the the next week and a half, we'll probably be seeing more, more Bitcoiners uh, right away here. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we're going to get into that momentarily. Of course, this is live. Anything can happen. So I defer to my good friend Bill here. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. If you have not already, like, subscribe, share, all those things help just so much getting this content in front of more eyeballs. So hats off to all of you that have been doing that regularly. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. All right, before we bring in our guests, let's take a look at where we are in the market right now. Sitting at $21,137 per coin, a single US dollar will pick you up 4,730 sats. 91.42% of all Bitcoin have been mined. And in terms of fees, a little bit of a spike today, I guess coinciding with the quote unquote pump. Oh, it's, it's, it's bear market things when you when you feel skeptical every time the, the price goes up. But uh, nonetheless, 23 sats per byte next block. Uh, however, if you're willing, willing to wait a little bit, mid to high single digits, I'll say, should probably do you. Um, or you could use RBF. That's a hot topic lately. Nonetheless, uh, I digress. Uh, shout out to sponsors of the show, coinkite.com. These guys just have the best damn hardware in the game. I love my cold card Mark IV. Beautiful. Um, I play with it all the time. I've got a, a disgusting amount of coin kite stuff kicking around the house. Uh, the open dimes are badass. The tap signer, the uh, SAS card, all this stuff, amazing. And also, I just covered the block clock. Uh, everybody loves their block clocks once they get them up on their shelves. Um, but be sure to check them out. You can head to coinkite.com and use code BTC Sessions. You got 5% off everything in the store. If you're in Canada, ShakePay is, dare I say, the easiest way in Canada to be stacking sats. Uh, so you can e-transfer in and out. It lands so quickly, like incredibly quickly. And you can buy your Bitcoin right away and get it into your custody right away. And when you go to withdraw it, guess what? You don't get raked over the coals and charge like 10 bucks for a withdrawal. That's kind of a pain sometimes when that happens. Um, but they cover the minor fees because they're doing smart things like batching transactions and they encourage you to self custody. So that's great. Uh, but nonetheless, if you use the link down below, sign up, purchase your first hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin, they'll give you 10 bucks for free. You get the same deal. If anybody uses your link and does the same, you can then also shake your phone every single day for free sats. They have a sats back visa card. They've got their shake paid program. They've got all kinds of different ways for you to be earning more sats so be sure to check them out link is down below if you're interested in that 10 bucks uh ledin.io you can use your bitcoin for a ton of different services they've been really useful for me whenever i'm in a cash flow crunch and i need to get my hands on dollars but i don't want to sell bitcoin i can deposit here get a loan of dollars to my bank account within 24 hours i pay back those dollars i get back the same amount of bitcoin they do have savings accounts for bitcoin and usdc now uh, the differentiator between them and as others is they have quarterly third-party audits in which you can cryptographically verify that your holdings were part of the audit. That's important, much needed, and I think setting the precedent of proof of reserves is, is just something that should become the norm in this industry. They've got their B2X offering, Bitcoin-backed mortgages, all kinds of great stuff. Start.ledin.io slash BTC Sessions. Use that link, sign up, fund your account. You get 10 bucks for free. Bitrefill.com. Uh, you can use your Bitcoin for a ton of different 
pretty much any gift card you can imagine you can buy with Bitcoin on chain and via the Lightning Network. Uh, you can do things like topping up your phone, getting inbound Lightning channels. And if you're in the US, you can pay all your bills and get on a Bitcoin standard. You'll earn sats back as you shop. You'll earn more sats back through the referral program all around. Awesome. Check them out. Link is down below. And finally, if you're backing up any important Bitcoin wallet, get it in solid steel. I'm I'm not a fan of leaving stuff on just a piece of paper. You have to worry about fire damage, water damage. The bill foddle over at privacypros.io. This is how I'm backing up my important wallets. Uh, just gives me that peace of mind. And uh, I love it. They've got tons of stuff. They've also got Faraday bags for the uh, more paranoid of you that you want to stick your hardware wallets inside of those uh, to block out external signals. Maybe a thing you want to consider. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, we'll wrap that up. Privacypros.io slash BTC sessions will get you uh, a little deal. Hey guys, coming up this week, a week, a week from now, it will already be day two of the conference, uh, Pacific Bitcoin. Very excited. I'm going to be down there. I'm doing a cold card deep dive workshop the day following on November 12th, the Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, that's, yeah, a week out. Crazy. Uh, so if you do want to grab tickets, btcsessions.ca slash events, you can grab them there. Limited space. They're going quick. Um, and I want to keep it limited space because it's better instruction if there's less people and there's more one-on-one -on -one time. So be sure to check it out. Uh, links down below. And if you buy a ticket, there's again, there's only space for about 15 people. And one of you is also going to get a free block clock micro. I'm going to be giving up that away to somebody who has bought a ticket. So uh, be sure to check that out. Links are down below. BTC sessions, BTC sessions, .ca slash events. Uh, anyways, enough of my blabber. I need to get these guys in here. Very excited. Uh, introducing Chris, Peter, Simon, and James. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to have you all on. I think first thing we need to get out of the way is, is let's just do a quick round of intros, maybe introduce yourself and what you do. And I think I'm going to, I'll toss it to Chris and Peter first. So Chris, if you want to introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and then toss it to Peter. Cool. Hey, Ben, thank you very much. I uh, just want to start off by saying thank you so much for having us on BTC Sessions. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, Cheers. Yeah, can't believe we're on here. We, we had the, the Swan Bitcoin guy, Bitcoin guys earlier. Was it last week? And such big names, and now we're on here. So, so thank you very much. So, who am I? Who are we? So, we are Bridge to Bitcoin. I am one of the co-founders, along with James. Is the other side? James and Simon below us. So, we co-founded Bitcoin uh, Bridge to Bitcoin. Um, I run the Bitcoin Surrey meetup in the UK, and met these guys earlier this year. And we set up Bridge to Bitcoin, which um, onboards merchants to accept Bitcoin payments in a nutshell. Um, I won't go on too much because there's, there's three other guys here. Over to you, Pete. Okay, so I'm Peter Rounce, and I'm working in a similar area, but more on the customer side than the merchant side. So we, between us, we do the whole circular economy, really. On the customer side, we've got Bolt Card, open source Bolt Card system. Um, and we've also got laserized cards and we'll have a look at probably the map later as well, which is interesting. That's exciting. These are all things that I'm very happy about because I, I've played with them. So, well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that chat. Uh, let's toss it down to James. Give yourself an intro. Who are you? What do you do? Hi, yeah, I'm James. Uh, I run the Berkshire Bitcoiners. Um, I'm class of 2020, so I'm a relative newbie here. Um, I spent 20 years in financial services. I'm an accountant. Um, and uh, after finishing, I did a research MSc, um, which is off my own back. So I got to choose the topic and uh, I ended up choosing to research Bitcoin versus gold. And that was 2020. Um, and at the end of that, I thought this is a bit more interesting than just an academic uh, MSc. Uh, so uh, I spent 2021 going down lots of rabbit holes and uh, eventually thought I need to do more than just hold Bitcoin and listen to podcasts and read articles and books. So I th early this year, I thought I need to get out there. And so I went up to uh, met Simon and Chris at Rail Bedford, Pete McCormack's uh, team in England. I needed to get out there and find some Bitcoiners. It was the only place that I knew that I could go because there was no Berkshire Bitcoiners. In fact, there was no Surrey Bitcoiners at the time. 
I set that up after meeting them. Um, so yeah, that's that's my quick background, relatively recent. <laughs> um, yeah, and and really, I wanted to live in a local economy, you know, a, a circular economy. So, and I think we all shared that idea. So it was really a sort of personal desire to be able to spend Bitcoin in my uh, yeah. local community. That, and I think shared with Simon and Chris that uh, we then thought, well, let's get together, share, share, share knowledge, build the build what we need to be able to do that. And then we thought, well, why not do the UK as a whole? And yeah. a month later, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> We, we we set it up. This is this is exciting. I'm I'm uh, already. I have questions floating in my head, but I'm I'm gonna hold back a little bit till we get to the the topics. But very exciting. Uh, let's let's get our last intro here. Simon, aka uh, Hodl Solo. <laughs> Welcome, man. <laughs> Give yourself a little intro. Thank you. Well, yeah, I'm I'm Simon, and um, similar story to James, I suppose. Um, but how we we converged at um. Bedford was a little bit different. I I started um, my Bitcoin journey in 2013, um, late 2013, unfortunately, because there's a big difference between the beginning and the end of 2013 price wise. Um, and sort of spent uh, all those years from um, 2013 to um, to when I met these guys, not really doing much in the community, not doing anything really. I hadn't really met any other Bitcoiners other than the ones that I'd sort of managed to orange pill myself. So um, it was around the time of the um, the Miami conference in the US when I I was watching that on TV thinking, like, we are so far behind in the UK, we really need to up our game. So I um, thought about what it was that I could do. I, I started um, the Northamptonshire Bitcoin Network, which is the, my local meetup um, group now and um and there wasn't really much of a place to, uh, that i could find to to list it online there wasn't really any um like a website where you could go and list it that i could find that was dedicated to the uk meetup um scene so i created bitcoinevents.uk which is a website here which lists all of the um meetups in the uk and ireland um as they as they pop up and appear and i help um, meetups, uh, um, you know, as I come across, um, people that have, people have come to our meetup and, um, that have been traveling quite a long way and we've sort of encouraged them to start their own meetup in their own area. And, um, and so that, that's, that's sort of one of the things I started off doing. That's how kind of how I met James and Chris and, um, yeah, we realized we all had a similar interest in, onboarding merchants and um growing the circular economy so we um so we you know that's where our stories converged i suppose and um awesome um, we've been together doing all this since well i'm very glad to hear and i'm 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 already seeing some of the fruits of your labor uh just in in some of the applications mm -hmm. and things that are being created so i'm i'm sure we'll get it we'll get into that um but Without further ado, I guess let's just uh, let's just dive into the show. So everybody watching, if you happen to be a newbie here and you're unfamiliar with the show, uh, pretty simple uh, kind of flow to the show. Pretty much um, we go by the three R's. First, somebody's going to drop a reason why they're bullish, something that they're excited about. It could be uh, a personal experience, an app, um, a, a podcast, a you know, it could, really anything, anything that floats boat, anything that's that's currently top of mind. So you're going to drop a reason. Then together, all together, we're going to riff on that reason. Questions, comments, tangents that we want to go down. And then finally, we're going to rotate to the next person. And so we'll do that until we've all had a go and we're all sufficiently bullish for the evening. So uh, I'm going to get us started here. I've got a... I, a pretty basic concept of uh, of why I'm bullish, but it's just there's so much going on right now that that I, I can't help but have this as my reason for the week. So um, I am bullish on on in person uh, meetings with Bitcoiners, and the reason is because I so I, I'm just surrounded by those events right now. So I just got back. 
not too long ago from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, where uh, Liz and Jacob Parrish put on an event called Hoddleween. And so it was a group of people. We had um, we had uh, an evening with the Beef Initiative where they did the Cattleman's Feast and they brought in a bunch of beefs. And so the Beef Initiative is basically a dude from Texas named Texas Slim. He's putting together a bunch of different ranchers, connecting them directly in their local communities with people that want to deal peer to peer. And through that, it's natural to inject Bitcoin into that situation. And through that, I've been able to meet a local rancher here whom I just picked up a quarter of a cow from and I paid him <laughs> Bitcoin, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, my freezer that I bought specifically for this in the basement now is stocked. Uh, and my buddy partook in that too. Actually, we kind of, we split a quarter of a cow together. So my friend who I orange pilled a, a few years back in 2017, well, he paid for his beef in Bitcoin as well. So we both stocked our freezers uh, with a local rancher um, for Bitcoin, which is incredible. So nonetheless, um, we had a cattleman's feast. Uh, the next day, there were talks throughout the day. I got to open up. Guy Swan was down there. Anders and Pubby from Toxic Happy Hour. Um, there was a lot of awesome people there. Was very excited to chat with all of them. And then they had a Halloween party. And again, meeting up with the individual Bitcoiners there, hanging out was fantastic. I got home a few days later for the first time in a while. Sadly, this is my bad, but first time in a while, I went to a local media meetup here in my city, Calgary. Um, there's one called YYC Bitcoin, which is Bitcoin focused. And it's put on by a couple of awesome guys named Russ and Jeff. And it was a great event. There was a bunch of people there. And again, just meeting in my local community, chatting with them, um, learning what they do trying to see where there's kind of um, connections in regards to, oh, what, what do you do for a living? Do, do you accept Bitcoin? Maybe there's somewhere where you're offering a good or a service that I could connect with you on a peer-to-peer -peer level. Um, so I love that that's happening locally. And then in five days here, I fly down to LA and, uh, and we're doing the Pacific Bitcoin conference. And um, one of my favorite things that's happening and don't get me wrong the event itself is going to be amazing very excited to run a workshop there but anders from toxic happy hour he's putting on a little club party and by little club party i mean he has 310 signups <laughs> for <laughs> for this evening party the day before uh the day before the actual event which is again it's i'm very excited just to be surrounded by this many awesome Bitcoiners in one place. And so, it, by the way, if you're going to be in LA, come to the Toxic Happy Hour Blood Party. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's listed on the Pacific Bitcoin web, website. So now the reason why I'm excited and bullish on being with Bitcoiners in person is when you go to these things, like especially if you've never met Bitcoiners in person where you very seldom do, you're kind of you're starving for that conversation that can be had, right? You're you 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 sit all day, you read articles, you you listen to podcasts, you listen to even shows like this where we're going to be discussing all of these things, and you want to be part of that conversation. It's like you're you're living vicariously through the conversations you hear through your headphones, and you get into the situation where you have that one-on-one. -on -one, oh, I'm talking to you about Bitcoin. And you want to hear it, which is is something that we don't experience all the time. Um, and it's it's a beautiful thing because there's there's this kind of just natural and mutual knowing of each other's lived experience in some way, shape, or form. We all have had the feeling of being the weird Bitcoin person in our group of friends, um, of of having the either don't talk to me about that or you can, yeah, sure, whatever, but but it's more of a a a, a pity listen instead of actually <laughs> caring about the topic at hand. And then to get into that conversation where somebody's equally passionate about it as you, and has different lived experiences, but you can come together on that one point is fantastic. Um, 
you can also learn a lot, right? There's, you, you can say, oh, I, I tried this thing out. Um, it was really cool. You should give it a try too. And then you can ask people's opinions on, well, I'm having trouble with this. And, and people are so helpful in suggestions of, of ways to go, things to learn, things that may bolster your understanding of Bitcoin. Um, and I find just being around Bitcoin is it, it's infectious. You get you you get this boost of energy. You're reinvigorated when you're around other Bitcoiners, and even to the point where non Bitcoiners or or people that are relatively new and are just kind of unsure, they get into these groups of people that are so passionate about something, which I feel is severely lacking in most most other people's lives that they can't help but gravitate towards it. And the perfect example I can think of is my wife. She came down to, to Charlotte for Halloween and she was pretty, um, she was unsure about the idea of going to a Bitcoin event. She was going, oh, I, I really like, I'm going to come. I'm sure it'll be fun, but I'm not quite sure. And she got down there and just the people that she met and kind of the relationships that she created she was like, Oh, that was, I really enjoyed that. And now she's curious about certain things. She's asking me about mining. We were getting a, uh, a miner and she's like, can we, so he was talking about heating. Can we pipe that heat back into our house? Nice. From, from the nice. house? Like all like these it. questions are coming up and I'm like, Oh yes, please come to more things. And now she's looking cause she's not going to be down for LA. And she's like, Oh, I wish I would have cut. Cause she saw the 300 plus people going to this pleb party. She's like, ah, damn it. I wish I was coming to this one. And now she's like, but I'm coming to Miami. Right. <laughs> and so now she's just all in and, and she's, she wants to meet other Bitcoiners. She wants to be a part of it. Um, so I'm very excited to see this because this is what I experience when I see all, all Bitcoiners from all walks of life. And so I, I guess in conclusion here, I'll just say that you know, online is fine. Listening to podcasts are great, great avenues to learn. Um, but when the choice comes between Bitcoin Twitter and standing face to face with another passionate Bitcoiner and having a solid conversation, face to face wins every single time. And so if you haven't been to an event or even just a local meetup or if there's no meetups available, start one, meet your local Bitcoiners because they're awesome and you won't regret it. Uh, so I'll wrap my topic there, but um, I'm gonna throw it out to you guys, um, thoughts, comments, and and I believe that you guys just had an event recently. I saw some some footage of some stuff that was going on. Um, so, I mean, just, just toss in your experiences, your thoughts in and around this topic. Anybody can jump in. Uh, the floor is yours, whoever wants it. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in, Ben. I think, I think you've stolen Simon's thunder. Um, anyway, <laughs> no worries, I, will, no, I can no, hear no. it all again, and I'll be but, yeah. Simon, happy. Simon is our meetup guru. He is he is a well, UK meetup guru, so he, that's, that's he really facilitates it, um, and it's fantastic. I completely agree. Meeting in person is fantastic. When you when when a new Bitcoin when a Bitcoiner turns up at their first meetup, it's like magic, isn't it? That that look on their face where they realize I'm not alone. I'm not, it's, it's real. These people exist. It's not just on Twitter and it's, you can see the relief in their face and their shoulders and it's fantastic. I say that meetups are good for two reasons. They're good for the soul and they're also good for merchant adoption. I'll, I'll come on to that later when we talk about the bullish, the bullish topics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, completely agree. And I, I have to say working in the Bitcoin space, I've never worked in such a collaborative space before. It's fantastic. I absolutely love working with Bitcoiners. I think it's because maybe it's because we're new and everyone wants to make it work. It's a fantastic space to, to work in. So if you're new to Bitcoiners, I completely agree. Get out there, get to meetups, meet Bitcoiners. Magic happens. Networking happens like on another level that it doesn't happen in the fiat world. And just to pick up on a couple of things that you mentioned, Ben, um, the toxic happy hour pleb party, three hundred and ten sign up. That's yeah. that's not a meetup. That's a that's a freaking conference. What are you talking about? A meetup? I mean that. that we're <laughs> this is we're quite happy party. if we have double figures in the UK. Uh, yeah. Double figures meetup is yeah. This is a good turnout. Three. That's amazing. So yeah, congrats, congrats yeah, with that. Um, and I, I like how you called it a, a pity listen when <laughs> someone 
you're getting off lightly. We we get absolutely thrown thrown out thrown thrown in front of the bus. A pity listen, yeah, pity listen, getting off lightly. Yeah, Your Canadians yeah. are a polite bunch, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and I also completely agree about learning a lot when when you go to meetups. It's fascinating. We were talking about this. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before. It's interesting. Even OGs when they come to meetups or people who've been in the Bitcoin space um, from from way back. Sometimes what we found is that they, they were into Bitcoin really early and then they've, they've kind of not gone on to the Bitcoin Twitter scene. And they're, they're, they're Bitcoiners because they're, they're holding Bitcoin, and they're, and, but they don't know what's happening in the scene. So it's fascinating. So James and Sai, you'll, you'll, you'll back me up on this. We, we've met what, what we would call OG Bitcoiners. They've been in it mm. for you know, a decade, yet they haven't come across lightning before. Like, wow. Yeah. So we were in the Edinburgh Conference um selling our wares selling telling everyone what we were doing and um was it they came up to you simon someone came up to you and they were uh, an og and they said well how does this work how does and i think it was you james actually and you were explaining and suddenly you realized that they didn't know about the lightning network and this happened at uh, one of my meetups as well this guy had no idea he'd been into bitcoin for two or three years and you know we were talking about wallets we had our wallet satoshis out and he was like what is this what, how, how are you doing this so quickly? And so it was fascinating. So I completely agree with the learning aspect because things get lost in the sea of information. So yeah, it's it's great for the soul and it's great for merchant adoption. As I say, it's it's a beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I don't want to harp on about it too much because it gets quite cultish quite quickly, doesn't it? Um, and and I'll just carry on talking. So um, I'm going to pass the mic over to someone else. Someone else talk. Awesome. Anybody else want to jump in? Simon, I mean, you're 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 the the meetup guru, I suppose. Well, so I don't told. know about guru, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. As Chris said, yeah, there are there are. We've had people, and maybe not from the meetups, but I think we've when we've been going around with the merchant adoption kind of, um, you know, treading the pavements and stuff. Um, there was one guy that just springs to mind that um, Michael at the the bookshop that was quite close to us where we were exploring some of the, the the old map data and trying to find you know some of these um um places that said that they accepted bitcoin but we were just looking to see whether they still did and there was a, a bookshop that wasn't too far from from me so i went and um and visited him and um he'd got into bitcoin in 2012 and bought quite a, a lot but then had never bought any more um he, he discovered it from watching max kaiser vi- um, on youtube he said and um never bought any more and just as the price had gone up he bought himself a holiday here and a you know something else there and um and when i went into the store and i said oh i heard you accept bitcoin and he said well yeah but nobody's ever come in to um to, to spend any i was like right well it's going to change today i want to buy some books with bitcoin and uh, how how are you accepting it and he he like had uh he said well probably through this app. he had like a wirex app i don't know if you have that over <laughs> yeah, there oh yeah it, it's got no yeah it's got no lightning um i don't think it has lightning and um so i showed him i showed him wallet satoshi and i showed him the lightning network and yeah he, he was blown away gave him some stickers and, and he was off and running and he can't, and then he started coming to our meetups and I think, but yeah, I mean, he's a good example of somebody that had um, gone all of these years from 2012 and never really met any other Bitcoiners at all. And so it, there's all sorts of people that you meet at these, um, these meetups from all walks of life, real OGs, people that have just come in recently, but we've all got something so common and fundamental in that we're really curious people i guess and open-minded and there's just um an instant connection between between bitcoin and straight away i love i love what you just described because it kind of and i i hadn't necessarily heard this kind of trajectory of og bitcoiners before but it's almost like the the newcomers of bitcoin find the ogs and reinvigorate their interest right yeah the ones that kind of got lost in the noise yeah. along the way realize yeah. oh my god this thing's still going and look at what's yeah. been built since i stopped paying attention 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we forget that, that um, there are a lot of Bitcoiners that have got lost along the way. That Because uh, there was a, that wave of adoption back in, in sort of 2013 or so where, you know, like Microsoft were accepting Bitcoin, weren't they? And then they stopped because the transaction fees were t- uh, too high and it was too <coughs> slow. And, and Steam were accepting yeah. Bitcoin for games and things. I bought a game back back in the day and then they stopped accepting Bitcoin. And, and, um, and it's like this is the new generation now in a way this is this is it's happening again but this time this time we're ready this time we've got the lightning network and we and we can actually do what we what we were hoping we could do back in the day back in 2013 or so yeah so it's it's um yeah it's that new blood that's coming in that didn't it's like they didn't know a time before the lightning network yeah (laughs) these young pups (laughs) that's great i james i'm gonna go to you with your thoughts first and then and then i'll go to peter afterwards because i want to kind of get um again his perspective on kind of where this conversation is going but uh james i'll I'll go to you first what what are your thoughts on again kind of like the in-person aspect of 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 meeting a a bitcoiner face to face and what can come of it and what's your been your experience yeah, sure. Just just before I do that, just on on the, just feedback on the last thing that Simon was saying. I mean, I wonder whether in a few years. I mean, I'm class of 2020, but I wonder whether in a few years there'll be newbies coming along to try and rescue us, <laughs> where we've yeah. got stuck somewhere Maybe. along the way, <laughs> and they'll be showing us all the latest. And we'll be going, oh, "Wow, that's amazing!" I, I feel like if you're if you're hitting the podcast circuit and you're chatting about the benefits of meeting other Bitcoin, you guys are probably in for the long right. haul at this yeah. point <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so um so yeah going back to my relatively recent story i mean i completely recognize what you're you're talking about there ben um because i had been in books reading articles and journals initially in the academic study because they only accept journals i mean i think i managed to squeeze the the bitcoin standard in there and they were like who is this guy who wrote it well i'm not sure he's a recognized uh, academic <laughs> but i managed to get that through but you know when you do academic writing you have to be quite restrictive of the things that they will accept in your in your dissertations um, but then in 2021, it was anything because this was then for my own interest because I was so I thought this was such an exciting area. But then by the beginning of this year, I could feel in myself that I needed to do something, but also that if I didn't get out there and meet people, um, I would become mentally ill. I think actually, <laughs> I think that's what would happen. I would just go mad. I'd sit on the sofa watching charts and thinking and watching podcasts and watching The Matrix again and again and again (laughs) until I just went mad. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because as also, you know, I didn't have anyone in my local, uh, you know, community, like my family and friends, squash club and things like that. No one else was a Bitcoiner. So there was no one really there to talk to face to face. So I I knew I needed to do something. And um I wasn't sure what would happen. I just knew it would be a healthy thing to get out there and meet some meet some some people. So that's why I went up to Bedford. And I think Simon, yeah, I, you were wearing a little little cap, orange oh. cap with a badge. Was it? Yeah, with a badge on the side. Tap root hat. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you had a little B. And I thought, right. Um, so I, I came and sat next to you. I think didn't I? And then. Yeah introduce myself and did we watch any football i'm not sure we did <laughs> yeah not a lot no <laughs> really i always Sorry say it's, it. yeah no it's, it's always good that it's actually streamed on online so we can watch it back afterwards because <laughs> we don't actually watch the game while we're there we have to watch it it's kind of like conferences you know, there's there's a lot of talks going on but oh, you, yeah. you, you gravitate yeah. towards like god i just I listen to podcasts all the time. I just want to talk to other Bitcoiners for a change. Yeah. yeah. We pretty much missed all of the conference yeah. that we've just been to. <laughs> it, yeah. it happens. Yeah. But yeah. that's, I mean, that's kind of what oh, the, some of the newcomers that are buying tickets to these things are the ones that are going to gravitate towards listening to the talks. I, I mean, not in all instances, because there's probably some unique, unique panels and, you know, maybe you're just very excited to see a particular person, but yeah, people definitely gravitate towards the the social aspects of of these get-togethers as well. Um, uh, Peter, I, I want to get your thoughts uh, here as well. Um, in terms of meeting other Bitcoiners and and kind of again, you're coming at it, and I I don't want to steal too much from the topic that's going to be uh, I imagine presented next, but. Um, you know, in terms of meeting other Bitcoiners and, and kind of building that community or 
or just as as James was alluding to, an an outlet for your madness. <laughs> how, <laughs> how how have you viewed uh, in person meetings with Bitcoiners? Well, I went for quite a few years without really doing that. Um, being a being a techie, I I started off designing electronics and I moved into software and then I wanted to make something real. So back into, you know, inventing, making real stuff, but I was just doing that by myself for years. <laughs> and, uh, and it was a chap called Danny Brewster who suggested that it's a good idea to go to conferences. You probably know him yeah. anyway. So you mentioned that on a podcast and, and he made a good argument. And, uh, and so, and so I did start going to conferences and in the UK, we used to have ones like, that were not just Bitcoin, that all the other rubbish. So, you know, so that that sort of set me back in that I, you know, I went there and I thought that wasn't what I thought it was. That wasn't like <laughs> that wasn't real Bitcoin. Um, but then then the situation improved, and and now in the UK we've got some really high quality stuff. So we've got advancing Bitcoin, um, we've got Bitcoin Beach in Wales, which is brilliant. It's not, um, it's it's different. Uh, very different to advancing bitcoin but you know awesome people um and then riga's not too far away of course and edinburgh recently so so for me i've only actually been to one meetup down the pub but i've been to all these conferences and they've been superb and as you say you know mostly it's going around talking to people and the best thing i would say for me about talking to people is that you don't have you can go straight to the point if you like you know you don't have to dance around and do the the green talk and the you know talk about the weather and well you know there's all sorts of frequently asked questions aren't there and and after a few years you you, you're actually not i'm personally i'm not interested in answering them anymore (laughs) i know you know i'm happy to leave that to other people you know i I know i know you know i know the answer but so i'd much rather talk about you know bitcoin and and get straight to the interesting technical stuff mostly um and the other thing that it's got value for me is it's it's quite inspiring because if you find the right people that you're on a similar wavelength to, it does, it does add, you know, it adds something which you can't get from just looking at stuff on the internet or going through technical papers or, you know, doing thought experiments, you know, other people do, do inspire you sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, you've, you've talked about working on different things again, like, Mm. um, you know, there's some of the projects that you've worked on previously that, that feedback from real people, as you say, as compared to, to thought experiments can, can I imagine expedite the process of, of what goes into building those applications of, oh, well, you know, what, what do you, what do you think when you see this or, or how do you think about kind of the flow of this application? And, and I mean, if anything, Bitcoiners are good at being blunt. And that really expedites the process, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's a good thing because I, I think uh, at, at the core of any Bitcoiner is a desire to kind of get to get to the root of a problem or get to the 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 path of least resistance to the solution to a problem would would be the better um, explanation of it. And yeah, I, I think that's if anything, that's what Bitcoiners are looking to achieve. And I I think that's why. I think that's why online it can be so abrasive, but in person it can be so friendly because at the end of the yeah. day, our goals are the same, but online there's no, there's no way to detect um, the, the tone in which something is said. And so everything comes off as, man, that guy's an asshole, but really <laughs> they just, they're just getting to the point. And sometimes they're doing, they're being an asshole too, but, yeah. but, but nonetheless, yeah, I, you know, I, I appreciate it for what it is. So nonetheless, um, I, you know, I, I'm going to try and cap this, this topic here again. I, I, I think we're all mutually in agreement that um, when it comes to online versus in person, in person, you can glean a lot uh, from talking to your local Bitcoiners or making a bit of a trip and uh, and meeting Bitcoiners potentially from around the world. Uh, I would love to get out to the UK. I do have a buddy there who's, I, 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 I won't say he's a Bitcoiner. He owns some Bitcoin. Um, he hasn't do- dove down the rabbit hole yet, but uh, I, you know, I think if I can kind of finagle my way into making a visit to him and then also coming to the UK and hitting a circuit, uh, it would, it would happen. So 
cross my fingers. I'd love to get there. Uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So with that, let's wrap that topic. Let's do a rotation. And so I, I know Peter, I was just with you. Maybe I'll start it with Chris, but you guys kind of have like a, a joint topic. I believe you want to riff on. So um, I'm, I'm going to leave with you guys to kind of present what you, what you're bullish on. Uh, I will quickly say to uh, the chat, thank you guys all for being here again keep those chat comments coming. I'll pull them up if there's anything relevant to ask. Um, and I did want to ask really quick, uh, just because it came up, Yellow asked, Laser Eyes card, where did you get the idea for your name? And in a totally different question, where are our free cards? <laughs> <laughs> Two questions in once. Yeah. Oh, in, in one. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, think, so that, that'll be when we, in the topic. Yeah, but I'll, we, I'll let you, so maybe, I'll just... Start Maybe not off. the free cards. Maybe yeah. not the free, but we'll talk about the name and it'll become obvious quite quickly. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll just start off with why are you bullish? Let's, let's go with cool. that. Cool. So what, why am I bullish? I'll, I'll kick things off. So why and what am I bullish about? I'm, I'm bullish about merchant adoption in, in the Bitcoin space. I've got a few props, by the way, Ben. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't help myself. Yeah. I thought you'd appreciate these. <laughs> the, the future. I thought I, thought, that, that, hey, I, I look just like Ben. I'm pretty sure you stole those from my house. I think that's <laughs> welcome great. to the BTC sessions. I, I, I think I, I just screenshotted that so I could keep it forever. Um, <laughs> also, right, I gotta give a that. shout out here because um, the the with the laser eyes card we have in the chat right now, and I shit you not, the person who invented the laser eyed meme. The, the literal <laughs> person that said la laser raid 100k chair force nice. hodl oh, where are my laser nice. eye royalties <laughs> yo <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what I we can it. do for you <laughs> anyway we'll sorry cool. I, I took the spotlight there you go no worries Ben but yeah we we are super bullish we've even we've even brought our helmets we, <laughs> yes we we are we are ready we've we, we propped ourselves up we've got our rocket boosters and everything guys to the moon but, to the moon exactly <laughs> but we're we're super bullish about merchant adoption as i say for for those who don't know who we are and what we do we're we're bridge to bitcoin and we onboard merchants to accept bitcoin payments in the uk although we're looking at seeing what we can do internationally to help people to help our, our bitcoin brothers and sisters abroad um, but we're mainly based in the UK at the moment. Um, and why are we bullish? Well, um, I'll, I'll take you on a little journey through through the Bitcoin space, sort of my my little journey as to why I'm bullish. So most of us on the call hopefully know about Bitcoin. Um, if you're not, you'll, you'll know soon. Um, it's it's the hardest, soundest money money there is. Um, and when I heard about it, I was like, wow, this is this is amazing. This is great. This is fantastic. But I can't buy coffee with it. This is, this is shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great if I want to move large amounts abroad and stuff, but uh, it's supposed to be a peer to peer digital cash. And I, I other than send large quantities abroad, I, I can't go down the shops and spend it. So um, that, that wasn't so great initially, but, but there was a turning point. And for me, the, the first turning point was the Lightning Network. So um, I think it was in 2015, the Lightning Network paper was written. And first transaction was 2017. And then we had the lightning torch in 2019. And that's when things started taking off. And for me, that was, that was the, the first turning point, the lightning network and the development of the lightning network. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with the lightning network, because there appear to be quite a few Bitcoiners who don't know about the lightning network, um, what the lightning network does is you can transact or you can send Bitcoin on the Lightning Network, which is a second layer. We, we think of Bitcoin as the first layer. The Lightning Network is a second layer built, atop, built on top of Bitcoin. And you can transfer Bitcoin on the second layer at near zero transaction fees. So if you're moving small amounts, it's great. There are fees that, that hike up the, the larger the amount you transact. Um, but if you're doing small transactions like buying a coffee, the fees are, are tiny, they're neg negligible. And on top of that, with the Lightning Network, it's a near instant settlement. So for those who don't work in the real retail sector, if you are a merchant, when you accept a payment system through traditional payment rails, 
that payment is not settled normally for a few days. The final settlement might not happen for two or three days. So i.e. Visa or, excuse me, Visa or MasterCard might not clear that payment for two or three days. So within that period, they might turn back, turn around to you and say, actually, that was a fraudulent transaction because that, that card or whatever, um, that was a stolen card. So uh, we're going to charge that back to you. So sorry, you gave away whatever it was. You sold, you sold, you sold that helmet for 100 US dollars and um, you're not going to get it. You've lost the helmet. So you speak to your insurance company. With the Lightning Network, it's near instant settlement. And I say near instant because it might take a few seconds, um, but it's final. It's near instant and final. So you have no charge back. So just those two things on their own are, are fantastic. So that, that, that was a real turning point for me. Um, now, the second turning point for me and for us was earlier this year when, when we formed Ridge to Bitcoin um, with James and Simon. Um, and that's what Coin Corner and to a certain extent what Jack Mullers with Strike are doing. But certainly for us, it was Coin Corner. Um, now, they released... What, what they call the bulk card. So that's a contactless Bitcoin debit card. Um, and there was, a, there was a big sort of furore about it. Everyone was like, oh, this is amazing. This is great. Now I can tap and pay. And if I'm honest, I was a bit poo-poo-y about it. I was just like, we've, we've got that technology about it. Bitcoin's supposed to be, you know, cutting edge, but we're, going, we're using technology that exists already. I, I don't get it. We're, we're, we're using QR codes now. That's, that's new, you know, so... I was just like, I, I don't get it. I don't know why everyone's so excited. But what got me excited was the merchant app that uh, they released to go with the bulk card. Um, so for those who aren't familiar, what Coin Corner do is they allow customers to pay with Bitcoin and the merchant can choose to accept that Bitcoin or at point of sale, they can flip it straight into their local currency, be it euros or pound sterlings, um, and hopefully other currencies, um, as hopefully they extend into other countries soon. Um, hint, hint, a uh, small request, Coin Corner, Danny, Molly. Um, so that's fantastic because now businesses, if they don't want to have Bitcoin on the books or the balance sheets, they don't have to. They don't have to hold on to it. They don't have to, um, well, well, let me put it this way. Some merchants don't want to have the volatility and they don't want to experience that. So that suddenly, for me, opened the doors to a whole load of merchants. So from our perspective, when we now go to businesses or business comes to us, the conversation piece is not, the initial conversation piece is not about Bitcoin. It's about this fantastic new payment rail that they can start using because they don't have to hold Bitcoin on the books or the balance sheets. Now, if you're a toxic maxi, you might turn around and just go, what the hell are you doing? They're not real Bitcoiners. They're not holding the Bitcoin. But for me, that is the start of their journey. And they're adding to the liquidity of Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. And that's really important. You know, they're, they're contributing to, to the space. And it's an inter interesting journey. So we had a... An interesting, so we've onboarded um, a, one of the pubs that we on, onboarded, mainly James. Thank you very much, James. Um, onboarded a, a pub in London um, called the Georgian Devonshire. Head down there, it's in Chiswick, W4 by the river, anyone in London. Um, and the owner has two pubs. And um, we set him up the first pub uh, just outside of Reading. Um, and he said to James, right, I'm, I want to I wanna flip the Bitcoin I receive into pound sterling. Like, yeah, no problem. That's great. And then James and I went along to his pub in, in London a little while later. And we set him up with all the point of sale devices and made sure it was all up and running. And without prompting, he turned around to us and he said, do you know, at this pub, I want to I wanna hold the Bitcoin. I'm, I don't want to flip it. And as I say, that was without prompting. And that sort of illustrates the sort of soft power of opening the door <laughs> to merchants for me just like it gives them an option then they go away they read about it and for me it's an interesting I, I quite like the fact that merchants might start off flipping it because it's a soft sell of bitcoin if you like so for me 
maybe this is a harsh way of putting it, but I think we've been we've been selling Bitcoin wrong, as in we've been selling Bitcoin, which we're trying to orange pill individuals. So, and that's a really resource heavy way of winning people over with Bitcoin, and it's it's quite threatening and toxic, and can be quite aggressive and cultish because we're effectively saying to people, "You're doing it wrong. Your money is wrong. You've got it Amazing. all wrong." We're right. We're going to be rich. Have fun staying poor. <laughs> all of that shit. Um, but by onboarding merchants this way, what we're doing is they're, they're getting Bitcoiners come into their shop or their restaurant or their pub, whatever it is. And if they're flipping into, pound, into um, euros or G, uh, Great British pounds and they're not holding the Bitcoin, they'll still get Bitcoiners come in. And those Bitcoiners will come in through their doors and Bitcoiners are, we're a crazy bunch. We will travel miles to spend our Bitcoin. Dennis. We will, the catchment area for Bitcoiners, um, the catchment area for other businesses um, for those Bitcoiners is much larger than your normal customer. And those Bitcoiners will come. And when they get there, they will be the most enthusiastic customers you have ever seen. They will record themselves spending their currency and post it on social media. It's mental. You don't get that with the US dollar. You don't get someone coming into a coffee shop and going, hey, guys, I just bought a five, $5 coffee. This is amazing. <laughs> you only get it with Bitcoin. We post it on social media. We love it. We want to spend our Bitcoin, and we love it so much. We post it on social media, and we rave about how good and easy it is to do. <laughs> get the owner out here. Let's let's give him a exactly. congratulatory yeah. round yeah. of applause for accepting Bitcoin, everybody. Ex <laughs> exactly. So what you're getting is you're getting loads of happy people turn up who want to spend their money. That's not like your regular customer. So for me, that's that's part of their orange pilling is all these happy Bitcoiners turning up. And it's going to make them think. They're going to think, hold on, we're going through some pretty shit economic types. Yet these guys, they travel fucking far to get here and then they're really happy to spend their currency and they're thanking me that there must be there must be something to this bitcoin so it starts and thinking it it's it sows the seed if you like um i, I just want to say what's the name of that pub because maybe i should go there and tell them specifically that i flew from canada to come <laughs> to the pub. Yeah. it's the, the george in devonshire in chiswick london in west london if, if anyone's listening awesome. um so yeah, it starts their orange pilling journey. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a much softer power. So as I say, for, so the, the pitch, when we go in, the, the pitch is, is not initially about Bitcoin. The, the pitch starts off with, do you want to use, a, do you want additional revenue, essentially? Because we're going to open up your business to these customers that aren't coming to you. So it's additional revenue. Um, that's the starting conversation. Do you want additional revenue? And do you want to use uh, a cheaper payment rail? Um, and it, it's not replacing anything yet. Um, it, it's running on, alongside. So there's no, we're, we're, we're not asking you to, to change anything. We're just giving you something extra that runs alongside and complements, runs in parallel with the system that a business currently uses. So in other words, there's, there's very little downside. I, I would actually say there's only upside. Either you get more business, which is more likely, you get more revenue, or you don't at no cost. Because at the moment, uh, there are companies and we will help those small businesses with the initial setup. So there's only up. You either get more revenue or you don't. And and the evidence is so coming. So it's a long story. Um, so um, and we, we we help with the marketing as well. So we will put it out to our Bitcoiners, to all the, the local meetup groups, the local to that business. And so we will make sure that they know that there's this business. So um, that's part of the package that we offer. And the evidence is that this is really working. So we're seeing, so the George and Devonshire who opened their doors to Bitcoiners, was it last week? I think it was last, last week. In yeah. yeah, last, last Friday. Friday. Instantly, as soon as we posted on Twitter, they, were, they had people that <laughs> afternoon coming and all weekend there were bitcoiners rolling through the doors literally posting videos on social media and and, and all this week because i was in the sister pub this evening for the yeah. box meetup and the manager there said 
that the owner's been saying every day this week he's had customers who wouldn't have had otherwise. So yeah, yeah I, I love to hear that. This is very uh, sorry to interject, but I just this is very parallel to there's a guy in in Miami Beach and he runs a uh, a taco place called Tequiza Tacos. And I was in Miami in 2021. Gladstein was putting on the Oslo Freedom Forum there and uh, or was you know, involved in organizing it. So I was speaking there and I said I was going to be in town. I tweeted out, hey, I'm, I'm in town. Um, what big corners are around? And John, the owner of Tequiza Tacos in Miami Beach, said, hey, I own a taco joint. I'm, I'm this is where we're at. Come to Tequiza Tacos. Uh, you know, we'll we'll set you up. Uh, so bring some bring bring some Bitcoiners, um, bring some clubs down, and uh, and we'll you know, we'll see what we can do. We accept Bitcoin here. Lightning, we accept all of that. Sweet. We show. So I get it was like me, Guy Swan, Stefan Lavera, like a bunch of and and then like ten or twelve other plebs. We show up. Dude is like, great. Come on. There's a table in the back. We're going to, and he fed us all tacos. He gave us all tacos the whole night for free. Wow. Then, I mean, we tipped the, we tipped the shit out of the staff, obviously, like more than we would have paid for the tacos for sure. But nonetheless, like the gesture was like, and then flash forward a year later to the Bitcoin 2022 conference, his taco joint was packed every night every bitcoiner just and i think unchained capital had their had their like staff party there there was all like bitcoiners and my airbnb was above the taco joint (laughs) in an apartment there it was amazing and so i'm so happy because you're you're so right it it attracts people and they will they will move (laughs) they will move the earth to just to get a taco right and and pay in sets it's beautiful mm. yeah it's it's fantastic and and we we've got hard data to 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 show that as well and and so yeah i'm bullish about merchant adoption we, we're getting loads more merchants on on the map and actually i've, I've got a map to share and um, yes. hopefully we, we had a little trial run earlier and i kind of messed it up but let's see if i can uh bring it up to share with let's see can i do that mm. i'll tell you i'll tell you when i see it Oh, no, let's let's just share my screen. Apologies, everyone. So let's share screen, share screen. So I am gonna. And, and don't one? worry if you you accidentally show the stream screen. We'll get a little bit of stream section, and people can see backstage. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll bring up the private chat so that everybody can see our <laughs> private conversations of all the terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pro- how do I? Uh, I'm, I'm probably the least technical person. So present, share screen, and then that? is that cool? So that's the screen I wanted to show you guys. So this I'm, is I'm this not is, seeing it. Hold oh. on a sec. Try it again. Present, share screen. Click on the one that you want, and then hit share. Oh, I see. I see. Window. Oh, window. You see. Pete's talking me mm, through no, it. I'm the no, least no. technically minded person. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay, here we go. Right, there's oh, streamception. No. There we go. This is our backstage, just so you know. <laughs> cool. There we go. So this is apologies, guys. And, and you got to click probably... on the right uh, the right tab. Or did you pick the wrong window? Might be. Can you? What, what can you see? I, I see the BTC sessions backstage screen. I think oh. you picked the wrong window. I think I think Pete, the guy building all the apps, is gonna have to. <laughs> You're gonna have to help me, here, Pete. Is gonna have to. Uh, is gonna have to do do Stop it for screen. You. Go on, Pete. What am I doing wrong? This has kind of killed my flow. Go on, Pete. The, the, I, I I'm enjoying this. I'll let Pete do it, and then, and then I'll explain why why the technical people build applications. <laughs> yeah, I I am probably one of the least technical people I, I, I that exists in the Bitcoin space. It's quite embarrassing. So, so as you watch Pete master his way through this process, um, he is the one that's building many of the fantastic applications and websites that you use with Bitcoin, and so you'll you'll be able to appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> that that oh what about my slide 
I want my slide, Pete. He's, he's putting up his slides. He doesn't care for the <laughs> he, he's, 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 he's problem left. with the client. He's, Sorry, he's, he's hung me up to dry. He's, he's just he's just putting his slides up. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you could that's all, right. all your stuff in it, hasn't it? Tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and just say I've got a maybe, slide. Maybe. I've yeah. got a slide that shows the number of merchants in the last four months has almost doubled. So we in the UK. So we've gone from, I think it's 51 merchants accepting Bitcoin to 91 in the space of four months. And it's, it's, it's a better graphic. Um, it doesn't sound like very much because um, we're a small country, but the, the graphic is, is pretty cool because we've got um, a map with all the Bitcoin logos with all the, all the merchants that accept it. And it's, it's, it looks fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I'm super, I'm super bullish about merchant adoption. Princey, uh, um, one of our fellow, bo- uh, one of um, another podcaster, Daniel Prince, he he gave us a phrase: "Accept it, and they will come." And that seems to be true um, because it happens. There's the Suffolk Jungle Rooms; um, they often have uh, meetups there, and they get people from all over the place coming. Um, and ideally, I'd like to see a Bitcoin accepted here sticker on every high street. And I think we're not too far off. And I, th- I think there's, um, we, we, we do this strange thing in Bitcoin. We, we evangelize Bitcoin, don't we? It's like this, it's this thing that's going to, it will, it will fix everything. But we do evangelize it a lot. But actually, what I think would be good is if we normalize it. So that's one of my, ta- no. well, that's one of my tags. Let's, mm. let's normalize Bitcoin. <laughs> don't evangelize it. So that just scares people off. Who are these, who are these crazy culty people? Um, we just want we just want it in society. It's a peer to peer digital cash system. Um, so yeah, we're almost seeing a new business every day. Um, so gradually, then suddenly, I think it's happening. I, I I love that you brought up Daniel Prince because this is how I'm going to segue into getting Peter on his his merchant side stuff here. But uh, the quote um, that that Princey gave you. Uh, accept it and they will come. I, he, he uttered those words to me as, uh, as, as we made our way through a town in Spain following the conference in, in France, which was Surf and Bitcoin. We went across the border into, I can't remember the name of the town now. Uh, what we were in Biarritz. It was San, I can't remember. Uh, nonetheless, uh, there was one guy who served coffee and like falafel or something like that, <laughs> like some something in somewhere in this Spanish town that accepted Bitcoin. And and we met him in we met him at the conference and and Dan was on a mission to find his shop and make sure that we went and we bought anything from him. <laughs> and so it was me, Daniel Prince, his wife, and all of his children, of which there are many, <laughs> like wandering through the old town to find this one shop of this dude who actually is from Canada, who moved right. to Spain yeah. and opened up his shop and, uh, and, and to hunt it down before it closed for like the siesta in the afternoon. Um, and we found it. We got there. We met up with them. We took pictures again, like did a stream or did pictures <laughs> about spending our money with this Bitcoiner in Spain on a coastal town. And it was beautiful. And like in what other instance would you get that? And I think the time is ripe for merchant adoption. I think it was too early in 2014, 2015, because yeah. the inevitability of scaling and having to introduce second layers was there. Well, the time has come and passed for that. And now we do have the Lightning Network and it's here. You can do on chain, but like Lightning is kind of the way to go mm-hmm. to future proof yourself. And so with that, I want to kind of jump to Peter and talk about your experience in and around, you know, merchant adoption from from the the perspective of the person actually making the purchases. Yeah, sure. Well, so I'm... I'm from class of 2012, I suppose. So I remember 2013, 2014, when we were excited about the technology. We knew it was a zero to one moment, digital scarcity. Um, and and we knew that it worked, I think, for the first time. It was decentralized and it worked. So, so that excitement led to going out and demonstrating it to people. 
and when you demonstrated it in 2013 2014 you would send you would get someone to install a, a wallet you'd send them some bitcoin and then you'd wait 20 minutes for a block or two <laughs> you know um and th and that's kind of where it failed in in terms of a demonstration obviously it, technically it didn't fail at all but it required a lot of explanation um if someone didn't sort of get it immediately um maybe didn't understand the cryptography or whatever so so i would say that there's a big difference as you say with the lightning network and and where we are now with things like the bolt card that's made it so much easier the, the user experience the customer experience is completely different it's reached the the state that the legacy financial system's in and i would say is going past it now um which is of course the whole plan really um you know we're not going to take them on we're going to build around them so so with the with things like the bolt card for example um the bolt card is actually a very simple idea uh, it's it's purely uh, an nfc card which gives a different reading each time um, and this is based on some clever technology by an xp when when a customer comes to use it though they are they're simply going up to a point of sale terminal at the merchant looking at how much it is and tapping to pay just like you would i looked it up earlier so in the uk we've had tap to pay for since 2007 is that right 2007 i have to check yes 2007 uh, and the us i think it's been a bit more recent 2017 and so you see you see a different response with uk and us customers in the UK, everyone's used to tapping to pay. It started off as ten pounds, and then it was twenty, then it was forty, and and there wasn't a problem. You know, this problem where you think someone's going to come past you and, you know, tap your your card in your pocket, it just never really happened. But the and, reason I'm laughing, Pete, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the chat because uh, no, I ben, can't see that. Ben, ben has dropped water all over his crotch. Oh, no. That's freezing cold. So apologies. <laughs> Apologies for wondering why I'm giggling beside you. Sorry. I, I have to let that out. Sorry. Well done to yeah, your okay. I'm, I'm equally intrigued by, by the bold card and the, the sure. point of sale, but also <laughs> I did just drop melted ice all over my crotch. So, <laughs> so sorry, Pete. Sorry, I was about to burst out laughing. Nonetheless, continue. I do and I, I I'm gonna interject while mm -hmm. while my my nuts are on the table here. But, uh, uh, I will say that I played around with the bolt cards and yeah. and just like while we're on the topic of them, I just mm -hmm. as an example, even just as a learning tool, it's fantastic because so my daughter is now five years old um in kindergarten and she's she's starting to learn about the concept of like oh you you work you spend time on something and i'm trying to convey the concept of like oh what what do i do all day why does mommy go somewhere and then come back and why am i in my office all day doing something and then i'm done and like what is that for well i do that because what i do people consider valuable and they're willing to give money for it in a roundabout way and then money pays for stuff so when you see that daddy is busy all day for something it's because it's the the act of doing something that pe people value so they'll give you money and that money will then buy stuff and so she's coming around to the concept of like okay you you, you spend time on something that somebody thinks is actually worth something they'll give you money for it and then you can buy stuff with that money and so then now she's learning how to oh i, I want to make a store and she's got like her little kitchen downstairs and she'll make a meal and she'll come out and she wants to and she'll pretend before she was saying oh i'll just pretend to give me money well now with the bolt card <laughs> um what i've done is i've taken breeze mm -hmm. and i've created a point of sale and I put little icons on the different things that she could charge me for. So now nice. in practice, she'll go and she'll have it and she'll tap the things that I bought. It'll oh. auto put in the amount. And then I've got my card and she'll say, she'll like hold out the phone that I have and I'll tap <laughs> the bolt card and I'll pay her wow. actually in SAT for wow. what she's made me from her kitchen. And it's just, 
just again to to help conceptualize like hey your your time and the value of what you do with it results in this conduit to being able to purchase something that's kind of what i'm working on instilling and it's it's a, an interesting thing to try and impart on somebody but again that that medium of having actual real transfer of value, even though it's like, oh, I paid 10 sats for something or whatever. The, the concept becomes there. She sees the number. She sees number going up. She understands I've, I, I did something and somebody wanted that and they, they paid for it. And, and so the bull card, even outside of an actual economic activity as a learning tool is incredible. So sorry, I, interjected with a couple yeah. of things there, but no, that's great so so actually really that's a different market that's that's the toy market mm -hmm. we better better write that down i mean that's a <laughs> that's a great idea but <laughs> what i find most interesting about that is that you're obviously you're teaching is something important but the the other the thing that springs to mind for me that can be taught is competence right and the fact that everything there is permission free and you can actually do it all yourself you don't need to involve a third party so yes. So you can you can be self or your daughter can be a self sovereign merchant. You can be a self sovereign customer. You can have a whole circular economy, and you're totally technically competent, self sufficient. You're not relying on anyone else to do anything for you there. Um, and the only reason that's possible is because Bitcoin is permission free. You know, and that is what enables us to do all this to make all this technology because we don't have to go and knock on someone's door and say, "Oh, please, can I come and play with your amazing toys and your, you know." chip fabricator or whatever do you do you think do you think now <laughs> now with with uh, uh, maybe a generation of kids growing up in that situation where and I, james i love that you brought up the toy market because holy shit if i don't get royalties from this shit I don't, <laughs> again, like chair force is already in the comments shaking yeah. <laughs> literally shaking um but but nonetheless like okay imagine a generation of kids and and this kind of harkens back to an old talk from andreas antonopoulos and he was like well you're gonna you have a whole generation of kids that are gonna be you know they get to 16 when they're finally allowed to have a bank account and and they realize like well, why am I paying you to mm -hmm. do the thing that I've been allowed to do forever? And I mean, is my daughter one of those people? My daughter is one of those people that Andreas Antonovlas talked about in the early days of Bitcoin that is going to get to the age. This is, this is hitting me as I'm saying it, but she's going to get to the age where she's allowed to open up her bank account. She's allowed the privilege of opening up a bank account with $10 a month fees and overdraft issues and, <laughs> and all of the shit that comes with a bank account. She's mm -hmm. going to go, why, why would yeah. I deal with this? Why would I bother? And that's, that's awesome. I'm so, mm -hmm. oh, that, that hits me there because I didn't, I, I didn't realize when I was nodding along to that talk, when I heard it like six years ago, that it would be my daughter that was being spoken about then. I love it's that. happening fast, yeah. It's the cypherpunk dream, isn't it? You build, build around it, build around the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> Peter, did you want to add anything? Should we allow uh, JD and Simon to comment a little I bit? Mean, on I, I, I can talk more about the bolt card. I've got another interesting uh, thing that's happened recently. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. If it, it might be worth, it's worth having a look on the um, on the Twitter bolt underscore card, um, where we've retweeted a lot of stuff from Bitcoin Beach Brazil, where they they've got a an excellent thing. It's very similar to El Zonte in a way. Um, they they are forming a community which is self self sufficient, self sovereign, competent. Um, there's it's all open source stuff, not relying on anyone else, you know, obviously using open source technology. Um, they've printed up their own cards, 2000 cards, managed to get them in <laughs> into Brazil, which, which was one of the, one of the big, uh, big things with customs and whatever. But anyway, they've, they've gone overcome all these technical and logistic issues and so forth. And they, and they've started it off, seeded it in a school. So they have, they're actually using, I think they are using breeze and they're using LN bits, T-Pos. Um, as point of sale devices and then 
uh, using um, I work with Rob Clarkson on, on the open source bulk card stuff and Rob has made an excellent app which Ellen Bits are now also using for programming up the bulk card. So they've, they've programmed up hundreds of these and they've given them out to the school kids. Um, and I think this is, this is brilliant. I mean, for one thing, a bulk card, if you, if you were just to get the chip, the chip is 20 cents. Okay, so you, you can't just do with a chip. You have to have a card with a coil in it and so forth to make it work. And that's a dollar. And then you print it up and obviously the price goes up. And we'll talk about the premium laserized cards. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so it's a dollar really. You know, if you just want to, if you want 2,000 cards like that, they're a dollar each, which is amazing, I think, because it's way cheaper than a phone. Um, it's open to everyone. So that anyway, so they've, they've handed out 400 odd cards to these kids and they're coming up and buying their fruit at lunchtime, 10 sats for a satsuma and all this stuff. And it just works. And the kids, you know, I think there must be six or something, but as far as they're concerned, it's just money and it just works. Um, and now it's now it's turning up into local merchants. They they're getting POS devices um, into local merchants, and 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 how amazing if you if you see how that started. It's obviously that's a bit like El Zonte, but that it's not toy it's not toy money at all. You know they can bring their card to the UK and spend it in the Georgian Devonshire if they want. You know, <laughs> it's completely worldwide and no permission required. This is self sovereign this is competence. This is incredible to see because, again, this is – I mean, there's a couple aspects of it, but, like, the fact that these kids – like, I think of the financial education I got in school, and it was nothing, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was zero. By the time I got out of school, I think there was I, – I seem to remember, like, a project in school where they were like, how much is uh, – pick, pick your favorite car and then figure out – how much it would be to pay for it every single month. And, and there was like very little, if any guidance around that. And it was like, I don't, I don't know. It says the payment is this much. I don't know. And this, like, it became like, I, 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 that's as much as I gleaned from that project. And so you get out of high school and you're like, I don't know how to do anything. I don't know anything about maintaining that myself as a financial entity in the world about income, about taxes, about just making a budget for myself. So I'm not screwed all the time, um, let alone how money works. And so to see these kids building these foundations this earlier, man, the world is going to change so much mm. in a single generation picture the knowledge that these kids are gaining right now at six is probably more knowledge than I had by high school age, right? Like they're, 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 build, they're building stronger foundations than I had like well into junior high and high school um, mm -hmm. in terms of, of kind of, especially if they're dealing with Bitcoin, holy mm -hmm. crap. I can't, I can only imagine how this, 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 I don't know, extrapolates out to the communities that they go on to touch. It's just normalizing, isn't it? It's just, it's normalizing the whole um, process of, of, um, of, of what Bitcoin is. It's like in the early days of the mobile phone or something in the nineties, in the middle of the nineties, where you saw somebody carrying a mobile phone and they were like, oh, that's really, what the hell is it, that guy doing over there? But um, we should use a tagline, normalize, don't evangelize. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's um it's taking something that um it, it feel, feels weird to people to start with when and that that's the whole thing with the with uh, going back to the meetups that when you see um bitcoin accepted here on the on the cash register or the or the on the counter or whatever that there's people that are not um bitcoiners that are seeing that and it's just normalizing it in their mind to them the kids mm -hmm. that are doing it um it's they're just growing up and it's normal to them yeah. that, that my kids get their pocket money in bitcoin and it's just normal to them it's never been a time where they where they've it's been a weird thing for them but it's yeah the only thing i can kind of think about in my lifetime is 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 the, that the progress of the mobile phone where it was a weird thing to see somebody making a phone call in the supermarket was really weird and now everybody on the planet pretty much has got a mobile phone. So it's, it's, um, 
it's it's that's part of the job, I suppose, of the meetups, and it's part of the job of 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 um, merchant adoption. That there's mm. so many people that will come into a pub, um, and it just sparks a conversation, doesn't it? And and, um, and it's the whole process of normalizing it until it's not weird, until it's just like and, and people can see, people will just learn a little bit from from watching others do it as well. The kids are learning between between them. Um, someone's watching in the pub while somebody else is paying and realize how quick and easy it is. And that's going in there somehow, you know, that's going in mm. and they're, they, they're able to, and then they sort of, then that, that spikes a conversation with them. Well, that, you know, these guys are paying with Bitcoin mm. over there and it looks really easy. You know, even if they don't say yeah. that loud, they're th- kind of thinking that. Yeah. And so um, it's the whole process of just making this normal. Yeah. You know, as it now, should be. I, I, I so I, I, I don't want to interject too much, but I, I, I do want to keep things rolling. But I want to bring up something that I, I want uh, that uh, to do with Peter that um, I had queued up and I wanted to just touch on it. And I want I guess I, I'm going to throw in a call to action with this, that if, if you're a Bitcoiner and you offer any sort of a good or service and you, you work or perhaps you have, you know, a boss above you that you can finagle into this. Um, perhaps it's worth exploring this. And so I'm, I'm going to bring up this screen and then I'm going to get, uh, Peter to, to explain what's going on here. But, uh, this is btcmap.org. Yeah. Um, Peter, can you, can you tell us what this is? This is a superb project. Um, so this only started, I think maybe a month ago and I'd say it's actually you know, it's very mature as a project already, uh, made by Nathan Day. I had a very small part, but yeah, Nathan Day and some other people. Uh, it pulls data from OpenStreetMap, and what you see here is is the map of all the merchants in the world that accept the bulk card. So it's filtered for NFC, which is, you know, same thing. You can, you can see all of the merchants in the world that accept Bitcoin, and there's obviously thousands. Uh, 7,000 or so. A lot of them are still from 2013, 14 and legacy and need to be, it needs to be updated and that's happening. But the most interesting thing for me, I think is, oh, you're changing it, is the, is the bulk card stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... Yeah. And, and so uh, what, what has been happening over in the past is that people have put up their own Google maps, which have limits of like a hundred or something. And these were all, um, sort of siloed maps all over the place, and that data is being pulled into into OpenStreetMaps, which which is where it should be, and then it's pulled out by btcmap.org and displayed nicely. Uh, there's also apps as well, but uh, yeah, the website is is superb. So if you're looking for a merchant, this is the place to go. Yeah, I I would like to encourage every single Bitcoiner that's like, if you're, I'm, I'm seeing everybody in the chat right now. I see everybody, the, the number of people watching right now. And obviously the, there's people coming in off and on throughout the podcast. But what I'm going to say is if you're a person, you're interested in Bitcoin and you work for a company or you own a company and you offer goods and services, Add yourself here. Go to btcmap.org. Like right now, go there, put, open a tab, bookmark it. And as soon as this is done, add yourself as a merchant that will accept Bitcoin. And just if you got staff, just let them know, hey, if somebody asks about Bitcoin, then give them my direct contact, contact info. Because, I mean, it's worth establishing those links with individuals. Um mm-hmm so that you can build that community. But like, again, just, just going back to, you know, we were looking at, um, we were looking at, this is specifically for NFC, but if you go to this generally accepting Bitcoin, obviously, obviously the numbers are much larger, but there could be a number of things that are, that are out of date. Um, I think Canada needs to step it up. I got to say, Calgary, what are you doing? Come on. (laughs) Seven, seriously six airdrie is like north of calgary that doesn't even count i'm not going to drive out of calgary <laughs> but like come on there's like what is this racket network well, i mean great if you like racket sports fantastic what do we got i don't know what that is device media design there's waves coffee house i know waves accepts it 
what else do we got here? There's like a music center, there's Bitcoin ATM. But like, again, if you're a Bitcoin merchant, if you want to be accepting Bitcoin, if you want to link up with Bitcoiners, number one, first topic, go to your local meetups, start meeting other Bitcoiners. Number two, list yourself on something like btcmap.org and on btcmap.org uh, to make sure that Bitcoiners that are searching you up that may not be in the meetup that you're currently at know that you're there. Yeah, uh, and can I just say it's quite memorable as well because I know the first bulk card business in Canada, or the first business in Canada to accept the bulk card is called Pizza Base and it's in Rosslyn. Oh, really? <laughs> I did not know that. That's awesome. That's amazing. I... So I, I went to, funny enough, I went to add myself to btcmap.org, but because I, I, I don't have a static location, like I'm not going to put my house, <laughs> um, I got rejected. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't, but hey, idea for, for future development. I would love to have like a, um, if there was an option for like local but mobile businesses, and so you could yep. set maybe like a geo mapped uh, or, or what would it be called? Uh, uh, a geo locked kind of like location uh, right. circumference where you could say like, hey, I'm within this city or this this range of this specific location, you know, 50 kilometers out. I'm willing to travel and I'm a mobile business. I think that would be incredibly valuable to add to here because. A lot of people, they have quasi-local businesses, and I think that would be great. So Yeah, we've, talk, we've talked about that in the, in the chat, actually. It's something we want to do. It just doesn't fit onto OpenStreetMap directly. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's been talked about is meetups and conferences and time-related uh, events. Yes. So I think it will come at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and just to, really just to piggyback on what you were saying, Ben, if, if you have a business and you're not accepting Bitcoin yet and you're in the UK – get in contact with us and we'll, we'll help you get on that map. We'll help you accept Bitcoin, get in contact with us and we'll see what we can do for you. There's a myriad, there's a plethora of choices out there and we'll, we'll hone it down and we'll, we'll get you on the map and we'll get you that extra revenue. Uh, and just to add that we, we have a, um, is it a Google maps, but we're, we're hoping to transition onto open street maps at the moment within the, the, almost all the data is over on uh, open street map. Um, there's Great. just, there's a couple of technical differences and, um so so, so the open street map is is, is a, definitely the way that we need to be going um but it's very much focused at i, I think at bitcoiners finding businesses and businesses promoting themselves to bitcoiners what we're doing in bridge to bitcoin however is talking to them about marketing and what we present to them needs to be uk focused and kind of I think that the, the the diagram, if you like, it's 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 essentially if we could construct it from the data on OpenStreetMap, which I'm sure we could, then we could make something that looked as sharp as the thing that we've got. So it's just literally our presentational materials just need a little bit of work between what we do and to get the data out of some some different representation of the data on OpenStreetMap is kind of the the thing that we're looking. I have the answer for you, James. Gap. Yeah. So btcmap.org have a thing called communities. You just set yourself up as a community and that'll do it for you, I think. Why okay. is, <laughs> I've got to ask here, in terms of, of concentration of Bitcoiners, what's the deal over here? What, mm -hmm. where, <laughs> what? So you have to be careful because I think that there is some, some old data in here. And, and so sometimes mm -hmm. it can be, that a certain area just hasn't been cleaned up as maybe as much as others. So, so there are some. Yeah, if you, if you click on one of them, for example, it will show you a survey date so you can tell whether if it's out of date or not sometimes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So the, the, it is very interesting though, but as, as stuff like this gets built out yeah. again, to, to quote Daniel Prince, and I'm so glad this is brought up, accept it and then we'll come. And mm -hmm. but the, the, it not just accept it, they gotta let people know, and yeah. they will come. They will come with their bulk what? cards. Yeah. And they, will, they will come with some exciting bulk cards too. Is what? that a nice segue? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. could, I, could 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 I just one before we leave this one other thing, um, Ben? If it's okay, all the Bitcoiners on this call, get yourself into OpenStreetMap and tag 
or, or I even even if there's no Bitcoin businesses in your area, but the map says that there are, go and clean the data up because one of the biggest issues that that that, that data has is that there's old stuff that isn't relevant. Maybe it's set up in 2013, 2014. The business is closed down. It's moved away. The owners changed. They don't take Bitcoin anymore. Um, a number of things have happened and we've been working hard in the UK to, to get rid of all of that old data. And I'm not sure how many other countries have kind of act actively gone out and cleaned up data. So if you're looking at, go and have a look at that map in your area. And if you recognize stuff that's wrong um, and, and, and those businesses either don't exist anymore or they don't accept Bitcoin, get rid of them. Because if you adding good data into something where there's a lot of bad data makes it very quite unreliable. So the, so there's two jobs to do. One is to add the new businesses and go out and, as Ben was suggesting, get new businesses on board. But the other thing, just as important, just as important to make this a useful, useful application is to get rid of the stuff that isn't correct. Yeah. It, it's equally important right now. I agree. And uh, just a shout out, uh, <laughs> Yellow, don't zoom in on Greece. <laughs> well, let's let's take a look here, Yellow. <laughs> let's see what's going on. I'm not super impressed with the number here, but I, I you know, Athens is doing pretty well. I've been up to uh, like Kefalonia and in and around this area here, and it is beautiful. But two, come on, guys, what do you got? Corfu. There's a restaurant, great, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, Athens seems to be where, where it's at. I did do a chat at the Athens meetup, which was incredible because I was on a rooftop overlooking the Acropolis. Uh, it was insane to nice. do a talk there. And then Yellow gave me a ride on his motorcycle after the <laughs> meetup back to my hotel, back to the place I was staying. So you can picture that, if you will, a uh, little yellow puppet giving me a ride on, <laughs> on a motorcycle through Athens. Uh, but it was fantastic. So, yeah, anyways, you're welcome. You're welcome, yellow. Uh, but, okay, so I I'm, I want to keep this moving because I, I don't want us to – again, you guys are in the UK. You're going to die uh, if it gets too late. So I got to keep it moving here. Um, but I'm going to wrap this topic and I'm going to uh, toss it down again. Summary here. If if you're a Bitcoin merchant or you're uh, a, a Bitcoiner that's looking to make peer to peer connections with local businesses or with, you know, the, the owners of local businesses, then you got to get yourself out there. You can't just sit there silently and hope that it will materialize. That, and that's why you got to get out. You got to meet other Bitcoiners. You got to find out what they're doing and say, hey, do you know, what do you do for a living? Do you, is, is, is there a chance you'd accept Bitcoin for it or you could convince your boss to accept Bitcoin for it? Do that, especially if it's something that you want to utilize. And beyond that, again, like the, the more connections you make around this stuff, if you're a Bitcoiner, Go out to btcmap.org, add yourself if you're a static business or maybe in the future if, you know, they add additional functionality around different types of businesses that are maybe more mobile. Fantastic. And just let it be known. And if you're an individual, if you're somebody that wants to pay in Bitcoin, go to the places that you spend money the most and say, hey, would you consider accepting Bitcoin? And, and even add the caveat if you don't want to hold the Bitcoin, you don't have to for the time being, like whatever you choose. And then that's their segue. That's 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 their initial step down the rabbit hole, because as was mentioned here, all of a sudden you get these crazies that are driving across the country, the province, the state, whatever it may be to come and buy a beer at your pub. And you start going, huh? what's the deal? <laughs> like, why are people doing this? And you very quickly get an orange build from that. So mm -hmm. we'll wrap that up, but I'm very excited for the duality of this merchant versus consumer uh, aspect of, of this joint topic. I'm going to toss it now to James and uh, without too much fanfare or excitement here, I'm just going to ask you the simple question. Why are you bullish? Uh, so I think, I'd summarize uh, my position as macro will be macro. 
So I, I get a little bit, we're working at the coalface on merchant adoption. And um, I just get a little bit annoyed with all of the conversation about price and high level markets, chain analysis, all of the, the graphs and the price predictions. And actually, when it comes down to it, what I'm really interested in is what's going on on the main street of this business, right? If this was a business, what would I be looking at? I'd be looking at customers. I'd be looking at the uh, visibility in the real world. I'd be looking at metrics that are not necessarily technical. They're not necessarily something that you see on a graph or a computer screen. And it takes me back to a video uh, that I saw of Jeff Bezos in the dot-com crash being interviewed about why the Amazon share price had fallen 95%. And his sort of response to the interviewer was, well, the business that I'm looking at has got customer growth, retailer growth, growth in our um, web, in, in, in the AWS, in the sort of early days of what they were doing with AWS. He said, as far as I can see, everything's going up, everything's looking great in this business. I mean, the markets just do what they do. Um, then it's 95% down, but everything about this business is great. Now, if I was looking at Bitcoin from what I'm seeing, what we're doing and what I'm seeing on a day-by-day -day basis, I would say that's exactly what Bitcoin looks like. And, and, you know, apart from the merchant adoption, apart from the meetups, apart from the conferences, the number of conferences, the number of attendees at those conferences, just going up and up and up, right? that, that's sort of basic stuff. Lightning liquidity, just going up, right? I, I don't see how that's not going to continue going up. Um, things like new layer two plus use case innovations in money, but also beyond money. And so this is this idea um, of IT security solutions uh, actually being what Bitcoin is. And that that's just money is just one application of that. A great application, but actually it's just what, satoshi described as the reason for him doing this or creating this or them or she um was was money but actually what they appear to have created and this is taking from adam back and jason lowry's ideas here so give them a hat tip what they appear to have created is the a unique ability to tie real world cost to virtual applications one of those virtual applications is money, and that's the one that Satoshi had in mind. But the scope, the scope of what this might be, is more than a lot more than money. Um, it will do money, but it could be much bigger than that as well. And and so for me, that kind of strate that strategic understanding of what this is, if between that kind of unique ability to tie real world cost to cyberspace i think is how jason lowry describes it for me that's 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 bigger than money <laughs> and the money's big enough right but this is an ultimate solution to a to a huge huge problem uh both now and even bigger into the future so it's not just about money. Money is just one application because money is a virtual idea. So money isn't a real thing. What, what when even even when we had physical cash, even when we had gold, what we're really transferring isn't that. It's the idea of the value that it represents. And so tying, being able to tie that to the real world and everything in cyberspace potentially, in terms of the security of everything, that's what this technology enables. So it doesn't just enable the instantiation of money, but it enables potentially all of this other stuff. And so for me, that's an incredibly uh, bullish idea because what it says is not only is the specific role of money and payments something where I can see on Main Street all of these metrics growing, but actually there's this whole other set of things that people are only just beginning to grasp at what bitcoin might actually solve that make it even bigger than the than most of us would have even thought i don't know six months ago so that's I, why i'm really bullish. i i really like that so it it's it's again the the topic that you're getting at here is is the idea that before there was this very 
it, it was very pronounced the separation between real world value and the digital representation of that value. Yeah. But what Bitcoin has done is tied that digital representation to the laws of physics. It's made it possible to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And saying, which is again, and juxtaposed against some of the um, kind of like non Bitcoin stuff we've seen going on recently. Like, again, like this, this shift of Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake. And you hear Vitalik talking about things like, well, you know, Bitcoin is constrained by the laws of physics and what a computer is and what it can do. Um, but we want to create kind of like a, a, a I, I can't remember the vernacular that he used, but he basically said that like, we want to be able to create an imaginary universe where we can change the laws of physics. But it, <laughs> like, but if, if you, if you want certainty of how your money is going to function, then why would you not want it tied to the laws that you are familiar with and that are <laughs> immutable? Right. Like you, you want that certainty of how is this money going to function? How is it constrained so that I can make actual calculated economic decisions in my day to day life? And so that that tying of a digital medium for the expression of our value, like where are we placing the fruits of our labor, tying that digitally, but with the laws of physics allows us to have the benefits of it being digital and global while also still having the properties of sound money and the lack of debasement that has kind of plagued fiat currencies over time. And so you have this global thing that again, it can't be debased and it's censorship resistant and you understand that it's immutable, that to change it would just be so incredibly difficult that it's kind of your best bet in terms of the rules of the system staying consistent. Um, and I, that's a very unique thing. And I, I, I think that most people don't understand that. I mean, clearly, most people on the globe don't understand the value of that because not everybody's using Bitcoin. But even in the people that have bought into the idea of quote unquote blockchain don't understand the values that are kind of tantamount to this working I, it, yeah. it is kind of my take on it. But I'm, I'm curious to hear some of the other people on the panel. Maybe maybe I'll jump to to Simon first, your take on, you know, what what's the true innovation here? Like what what has been accomplished that that wasn't possible before. Um, we're going deep now, aren't we? Yeah, getting... we, I guess Sorry, so. Sorry. Sorry. From... that was my, it's, it's going to be my section. <laughs> you know it's going to be like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you've, you've, you've said it. Um, it's, it's the tying the digital realm to the real world. And that's what, um, until we become like, um, humanity becomes beings of energy that, leave our bodies and um exit into the universe we need to be tied to the real world so so um bitcoin um yeah it's that that's one of the major super duper revelations of it and the innovation that that um once you get digging into the into the deepness of what it means this is the things that when you first get into bitcoin you've no idea that you're going to head into these um sort of realms of um of 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 deepness you know <laughs> it's um it's the stuff that i love to listen to but it blows my mind you know yeah. like talking about that sort of stuff it's it but it's yeah it's it's stuff did did satoshi really even consider i suppose he he he, he must have done you know some of that stuff but I, yeah I, it's, it's, know, it's i i i'm i'm not sure I'm not yeah. sure because I think he, I think they whatever wanted to create money and and it, and it's a brilliant application. Yeah. yeah, but but what they may have created is in fact perhaps more than that. It's a generalized solution to the problem of tying anything virtual in cyberspace yeah. to the real. They, they opened Pandora's box in in 
a very positive way, right? Mm. Like it's it's yeah. I, I wanted to fix one thing, but oh my god, I fixed I accidentally. The world. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally, accidentally picked, picked the world. Of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there was those touch points. I think um, who was it that said about the energy um, being tied to that one day we would have an energy money. Um, was it Ford, um, Henry Ford? Henry, Henry Ford. Ford. Yeah. Okay. That, um, there's a newspaper article, isn't there, that um, mm. talks about that. So that sort of stuff was kind of out there, and you know, Hayek said about the um, the sly roundabout way. Was it Hayek that said that? Yeah. Yeah, it was. That, um, so, um, you know, these things are um, have been touched on, but yeah, that's that's the genius. So whether intentional to actually or not, build it of, to actually build to it actually is the genius yeah put those things together you know with mm -hmm. the um the difficulty adjustment and the mm -hmm. proof of work and get yeah. all those components together to make it become greater than the sum of its parts and it's it's so many great parts and it's just um you know it's something that is just so incredible um it's what keeps us all here. It's what keeps us all interested and in thinking that there's so many layers to the onion that we just carry on thinking about it. And we lay away at, no at night thinking about it and we go to meetups and there's never an, an end to the different subjects that it covers. Um, yeah. You know, it's never ending, isn't it? There's it's, no there's no bottom to the rabbit hole that we can yeah. go down. You can keep going. I think I, I, I want to uh, I want to toss it to Peter here and, and kind of pose the same question again. Like, what do you what what do you think was solved that that keeps on kind of bringing people in and, and captivating kind of their 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 interest in and around this? What, what's what's the main thing that, that keeps people here? I think from a computer science point of view, it's digital scarcity that's that was what happened you know we couldn't we couldn't have digital scarcity in a decentralized way before it just wasn't we didn't know how to do it and when bitcoin when the bitcoin white paper and the software was released we knew how to do it so and that that was that was most applicable i, I think it's only applicable to money if i'm honest i think bitcoin is bitcoin is bitcoin i think if you try and generalize i think it's hesitate to say foolish but it, i think i think it leads you down the shit coiner route if you if you try and generalize and you and you go into blockchains and all this we've been there before you know in the past um no, consultancies no, I... consultancies will do it in order to try and make money out of it you well, know i know i used we'll, to we'll get the pushback from james afterwards yeah. but yes okay okay Peter, yeah. keep, keep yeah. going so so yeah i mean you know i you know, I, used to, I know what consultancies are like they 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 will try and you know make things their own and and you know they have blockchains for supply chains and stuff but it's rubbish it's just a database you know it's not bitcoin it's totally different um it's just a sort of marketing attack really um it's my opinion anyway no um, no i know I, I completely and i completely... would say and i would say that uh, really what what bitcoin does is it gives you gives you truth because you've got the ledger and the ledger is obviously linked to time um, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but anyway, because mm -hmm. because you put energy into the system, the difficulty adjustment adjusts the energy to give you ten minute blocks. It's it's a time chain, you know, and and that time chain gives you truth because you can't go back and change stuff that's happened in the past. So sure, you can put money and transactions on it, you can put other stuff on it as well, and obviously people have tried that over the years, and probably the first one that was the first, you know altcoin, whatever you want to call it, the first attempt to use similar technology for another purpose that I remember was Namecoin. And that made a lot of sense because the domain name system is highly centralized and it's a real problem. You know, so if you can decentralize that, it's it's like an obvious thing to do. But that that just failed, you know, simple as that. People thought it might work, but it just failed. And then obviously now you've got 40,000 other things which are you know, I don't even want to talk, to talk about them. You know, I think it's really important to the two things that are scarce in your life are Bitcoin and time, you know. And so you have to focus on what's important and Bitcoin's important. The other stuff will just waste your time. <laughs> I, I want to hear James' thought. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I think that 
maybe I haven't described it, what I'm talking about, uh, as well as Jason Lowry, probably. I mean, I don't know if you've read his paper or seen him talk about it, Peter, but, I, but, but you know, he is not at all talking about any forms of other blockchains or shit coins. No, he's not. He's saying Bitcoin is unique. But what he's saying is, is that our categorization of it as money, he, he describes an allegory. He says that the, the, guy, the guy who invented gunpowder was a doctor, a medical doctor, and he called it medicine because he was a doctor and that's what he was trying to create. He created gunpowder and for 200 years, people called his invention medicine until somebody decided that it actually had other properties, possibly more useful even than medicine, which was why it was created. And so it became known as gunpowder. Okay. It just, we, we, we call it money. This is Jason Harris point. It's not saying that we create something else. He's saying that Bitcoin is the only thing. Proof of work is the only thing. But what he's saying is that we call it money because the inventor called it money. And that actually that might be a limiting idea that in fact it's more than money. That's that's the point he's making. Not that we need loads of other blockchains and shit coins. Not at all. No, he's completely, that's not the point. And I, I, I wanted to make that clear. I am definitely not in any way <laughs> going to be interested in any other coins, any other blockchains, or anything, frankly, in proof of stake. But this did you notice how it triggered Ben to talk about Ethereum and stuff? It, it, it's, uh, it's that mindset. It's taking down that route. But I think I thought Ben's point was about the move away from proof of work, making it even more of a shit coin. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's why. But, yeah, but yeah. why are we spending time on it? You know, we know proof of stake's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Again, I, what what I'm curious about here is so you, you get down the conversation of. What else outside of, because money is very all encapsulating. I think people don't realize like how much of money has been replaced by fiat assets. Um, just, it, just in terms of like, because our money is so broken, so many other things have taken the place of money for a lot of the properties that it used to offer. And so I, maybe I'm misinterpreting it here, but what I'm, what I'm hearing is different iterations of we're going to get a return back to all of these different uses of money or to, for lack of a better term, like to get a little bit more descriptive, how we allocate the fruits of our labor um, all encapsulating, it's going to kind of, revert back to one as opposed to, Hey, you know, your money isn't holding its value. So you need to put it into this asset and this as this asset and this asset. I think the end game here is that money takes on all of the properties that it used to, and it ruins a lot of the, the, how do you say it? Fiatization. <laughs> <laughs> of the globe that we've experienced so far. So like, uh, you know, to, to clarify here, I don't think that we get real world assets on the Bitcoin blockchain, or at least, no, I, I think we do. But, but I think that the value in that is not necessarily there because it's very difficult to tie a real world asset to a digital medium like Bitcoin in, in a, a way that makes sense, like using a blockchain, right? Because so if you can, if you can, <laughs> so if you tr try to tie a real world asset to a blockchain, then you have to make room for the fact that you could have bad inputs. And so if you have a bad input, you then have two, two possibilities. One is that your blockchain is immutable and that that bad information is then forever in the blockchain, in which case the blockchain becomes useless. Or you have the possibility that you can amend the blockchain to, to factor in the incorrect data and correct it, at which point 
why are you using a blockchain? And so this is the di like this is the catch twenty two. Like you you can't put real world assets, physical assets on a blockchain. And I think that's kind of what maybe Peter, what you were getting at. Is that what you were alluding well, to? That's, yeah, I mean, there's that's one thing. Certainly, that was something I think we went through in 2017, 2018, where people were, you know, saying we're going to put housing records on the blockchain and stuff like yeah, that. I mean, I all, all that. of these things have been around, you know, um, and been discarded, essentially. <laughs> but they come back now and again, you know, as you've seen, you get to uh, get cycles of this, of this stuff, but hopefully decaying cycles. Yeah. So, so James, did it, was there when when you're talking about things external to money? Did yeah, you so, have an so, idea? So, so, pick, so, I think to describe what I mean. So, so, what you were just describing, money goes back to being what it used to be, and I think that's that's. If I just build on that, so you what you were just saying about maybe what we're saying is that money goes back to filling the gaps, doing the things that it used to do, mm. except that. The world that we live in today has got this huge, huge load of stuff that didn't used to exist at all. So the entirety of cyberspace. So everything that we do online, everything, and that is a growing share and will continue to grow into the future. So if money just goes back to doing what it used to do, how does it interface, how does it interface with that entire cyberspace? And I think this is the point, is that actually... Sorry, that's just, just software, though. Money's yeah, value, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but, you know, you but, have but Bitcoin is value communication, back, but it's not going back. It's not going back to what it used to do. It's it doing that, but it's also performing, capable of performing the role in cyberspace to lock everything. Whether that's and it, that's why I mentioned Adam back in in my why I'm feeling bullish because actually it goes back to his ideas of hash cash. Basically, it allows you to implement security in pretty much using Bitcoin. But pretty much everything, because you can tie almost everything to real world in consequences. If you want, I, if you want to see, I would say, if you want to generalize Bitcoin to a useful technology, look at public key cryptography. That is underutilized at the moment. It's been around since the seventies. It's in Bitcoin. Obviously, it's a key part of Bitcoin. But there's lots of other places that can be used. That's really important for sovereign individuals. Really important, and and it's not. Bitcoin as such, but if you're in, if you're in Bitcoin, you probably know what public key cryptography is, and and there's just so much work that needs to be done in that space. I would say. So I think I, to, to kind of round out the again, like there's there's obviously back and forth here, but I, again, I think linking linking value to to assets, real or digital, outside of you know, a native like unit of account that's set on the Bitcoin blockchain is, I, I would say inherently it, like impossible. But that said, I will say that to, to James's point, the, the general idea that all of the uses of what Bitcoin can do down the road may not have been explored and what that looks like i have no idea i don't think it in, includes linking external values i no. think i think that no, yeah and and, and i it's think about that its role in cyberspace specifically it's about its role in cyberspace specifically not not the real world yeah yeah I so so i i, I think that it, it will be interesting to see how it progresses I, I don't think that we live in a world where like, oh, this digital asset is somehow externally linked to the Bitcoin blockchain. And then like that represents this other thing outside of it. No. I don't think you're going to get that because that breaks down over time. Mm -hmm. um, and people may believe it for a short. I'm, I'm almost certain that we'll get a point where it's like, oh, this this stock is linked to the Bitcoin blockchain. And then, oh shit, it's broken. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, like, I yeah. think we'll get a lot of that. Stable um, coins, for example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like they're all right until they're not. Yeah, yeah. Stable coins are fiat with additional counterparty risk on the on top of the fact that yeah. you know you don't know how much it's going to be debased, but then also you don't even know that the dollars are actually there. So it's, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of those layers of. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on, but somehow it's linked to Bitcoin. So it's secure. Oh, wait, it's not. Um, but nonetheless, I do think that much like it, it, it harkens back to 
you, you, the old conversations about the internet. Oh, like what can I do on the internet? Well, you can do this one thing. Well, that's mm -hmm. stupid. I can do this one thing with this other thing that already exists. And then people don't realize the implications. So I, I think there's something to be said there, but I, I, I do think at, at, at a core level, um, we're not going to be able to link all the world's value to the Bitcoin blockchain, but in a way it kind of already inherently is because that's what money represents. And the more people gravitate towards the best, most sound money, the more Bitcoin will just represent all of the economy. So we'll see where it goes. But well, I know yeah, that you're right, like, you're right. It's a, you, when you say gravitate, you're right. Of course, you know, it's a black hole for money because as it becomes larger, it attracts different markets. You know, at the moment, maybe it's not large enough to support, I don't know, oil trading. But, you know, in when it 10x is again or yeah. so, then it will be large enough to support that market. And, and so it carries on. That's the black hole, isn't it? That's the shit hits the fan when it's large enough to support the oil market. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, we're going to wrap that topic here because I, re I recognize it's probably it's like midnight for you guys. And I know that. I, I got to get Simon in with his topic before before he fades into oblivion in the blackness of night in the UK. Uh, we, we, we were on a call, just a random call the other day. Um, I can't remember even why we jumped on a bridge to Bitcoin call. It was something about something really minor. And I came off the call and realized we'd been on this call for three hours. <laughs> I don't know if you realize that, guys. I can't even remember. It's this tiny thing we wanted to, to chat about within mm. our bridge to Bitcoin circle. And yeah, I came off went, God, well, yeah. we, uh, this is what Bitcoin does. But anyway, yeah, sorry, there's always I, so I, much to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I just dragged it out even longer, Ben. Sorry, that's, that's the way it is. That's that's how it goes. But so I, I'm all all segue here. I'm gonna queue up Simon and uh, and get his topic. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't really need to preamble too much. So Simon, why are you bullish? Well, this hopefully brings it back to um, where we started. Bookends it back from the beginning with the meetups so but specifically the uk meetups i mean that's um the bullish topic for me is is how the meetup scene in the uk has just um gone pretty much like exponential in the last in this this year so we've gone from um back at in february of the start of this year um, there were seven meetups um, in the UK that um, I was able to sort of find. So when I started Bitcoin events UK, the website, um, and wanted to list all of the meetups that were around the country, um, I could count seven. And, you know, there was one in Birmingham, the Brum Bitcoin beer uh, meetup. There was the um, Essex meetup and Bitcoinology down in London. Um, so there was there was you know, and a few others. So there were seven at the start of the year, but then through, you know, I, w I went on a podcast. Um, I forget when that was sort of um, April, May sort of time. I went on the bit by bit podcast and talked a lot about um, meetups then. And I got a few people that contacted me afterwards that wanted to start meetups in their own area. Um, um, there was a, a guy, um, Mike D, um, I, and he started the uh, Sheffield meetup and then Adam, um, he started the Leeds meetup afterwards. There was a guy that um, was driving, I think I mentioned earlier, a guy called Tom that was coming to our meetup um, in the North Ants, um, the North Ants Bitcoin network. Um, he was driving over from Leicester, probably like a 45 minute, 50 minute drive to us. So we suggested to him, you know, don't stop coming to us, but start one up in, in, um, in Leicester as well. So he, he started his Leicester meetup over there and we've gone from seven meetups to 26 meetups now um so it's been so like if we ha and there, there are maps i haven't got a map of what it was like um back in february but it's it's you know it's a similar massive adoption i think and, and i actually worked it out earlier that's a 270 percent increase in in um in meetups so it's it's been a huge year I think we'll look back at this year and and say for for the UK this has been massive growth. I mean we can uh, if we if we do that 270% again next year it will be like 96 meetups or something which will be crazy. The rest of my beard will go white then. It's it's like that would 
there'll be there'll be so much going on. So um, so it's it's huge it's huge for the UK because we re- really were so far behind. But what it what it means is that um, all these networks that have na- now the, all these connections we're we're like every meetup is like a node on the network, you know, and we, and we can form these connections between each, each um, we've, we've got a telegram group with all the admins or like the organizers from all the meetups. So as uh, meetup groups grow um, and, you know, and we start doing more and more talks because um, one of the things about the, the meetups now, especially in a bear market is what you get at a bit in a, in a bear market meetup are just bitcoiners you get like real hardcore Mm -hmm. bitcoin maximalists you know you're you're getting guys that have been in for a long time and um not always a long time but you're getting you guys that are they're not um they're not sort of curious about bitcoin they've been they've been on bitcoin twitter for a while and they're, they're um they know what they're talking about pretty much. So it's a really good time to build those foundations. Um, oh, did he freeze? <laughs> I, I think he froze. He was, he's deep in thought. Maybe he's just really, <laughs> really <laughs> thinking about what he's going to say next. <laughs> oh, there you are. I disappeared are. and I'm back again. I got you. <laughs> My crappy internet connection. Um, so, yeah. So I don't know where, where I lost you, but um, it's... Um, it's 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 grown so so fast it's been really good um and i think there's more growth there's more growth to go there's more growth in in each meetup now growing in size and the the types of things that we do within the meetups um and some of them some of the meetups i mean they're a lot of them are basically just um a bunch of guys meeting up in the pub for a drink you know and 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 that's something i wanted to emphasize to people that if you're thinking about starting a meetup it doesn't need to be um i think a lot of people get stuck at sort of i i've got to organize i've got to make a presentation and i've got to do um an educational talk to people because there's going to be a lot of um people that want to learn about bitcoin especially at the moment bottom of a bear market that's not necessarily what you get. You're getting people that um, you're just getting Bitcoiners, like I said. So, you know, start start small. It's easy. It, all you basically need is start a Telegram group, start a Twitter account for the for the meetup. Use the Twitter account to attract the um, the Bitcoiners um, to your to your telegram group and then once you've collected that bunch of of um bitcoiners into that telegram group organize a a a meetup in the pub it's you're just basically um organizing a meetup with a bunch of mates you know and and as we said before you know you 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 there's not a lack of things to talk about you're going to be there for hours talking about bitcoin and three hours are going to be gone before you've (laughs) realized it and um and from that you can you can um you know, plot world domination. You know, <laughs> this yeah. is this is um, where revolutions start. You know, is is in pubs, in bars. This is how the um, the American Revolution started. You know, a bunch of guys sitting around in a in a pub plotting revolution. This is how it starts. So, so, uh, uh, Simon, I, I, can you reiterate those numbers? You said seven meetups, and yep. what was the timeline? And and then, so we've gone from yeah, so from around about february february to april so there wasn't much growth really in that time so i started getting interested in studying in in starting a meetup myself around around that time and then when the miami conference i remember again that was in april i think wasn't it so um that was the time when i really thought right we've got we've got to start growing the uk scene here um and i started bitcoin events and we've gone to we've we've got 26 meetups now around the uk i mean i mean i could i could list them off but there's there is a huge there's a huge amount we've got them we've got glasgow we've got newcastle um yeah there's essex and leicester and north Ants and berkshire bitcoiners and surrey bitcoin um there is there's 
there's just a ton. There's there's the guys, uh, uh, Coin Coiner guys, has, has started one in the Isle of Man, um, where all, all the obviously there's a huge amount of uh, adoption in the Isle of Man. So this, and I think a lot of people don't realise um, what you know what the growth that we've had in in the UK this past less than a year, really. Um, That's, so this is the crazy thing to me. It's it's the midst of a bear market. And you've had that kind of growth in terms yeah. of meetups in yeah. the midst of this. So to me, that says that there's a, there's a lot of like stealth Bitcoiners out there. Yeah that we yeah. don't realize are just in our local communities. And that's why I think it's so important to, again, like reach out and say like, hey, be be the person in the crowd to stand up and say, I am Spartacus. Yeah. And and all of a sudden you start having heads pop up saying, yeah, hey, exactly. me too, me too. Um, yeah. It's, I, it's important. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, like we touched on earlier, there is, and it, and it goes so hand in hand with the merchant adoption, the the meetups that, um, and and through through going door to door almost with with our um, merchant adoption, we have found um, Bitcoiners, like we said earlier, that that really didn't know what was going on, that there was actually a community out there um, that they they hadn't discovered the Bitcoin community because maybe they're not on Twitter. Um, so they've, jo- they've joined the meetups and it's making those connections, but that's the, th- the other thing to, to really talk about is that the merchant, um, adoption goes so hand in hand with, with the meetups that the, the leverage that that gives you, um, when you're going to speak to different merchants, when you've got a meetup group, whether it's 12 guys or whether it's 30 guys um if you've got that that meetup group that you can go to your local pub and say look if if you guys accept bitcoin we'll have a meetup here every week and um that gives you a lot of leverage to um and you know um they're going to get that extra business which they weren't going to get otherwise um and you if you've got a local butcher that um it starts accepting bitcoin you can within your telegram group you can say right guys we've got this butcher um he's accepting bitcoin now let's all everyone just buy let's buy our meat from this guy and um instead of like in and in years past where they did accept bitcoin and that, like we said with the maps and everything where you've got these legacy people on that were accepting bitcoin and maybe they've changed hands and there was no real incentive for them to carry on accepting bitcoin because nobody came in like the bookshop, nobody came in to to accept um, to pay with Bitcoin, so he kind of forgot about it. Um, but if you've got a meetup group, like with a bookshop, I go to the bookshop and I take my kids and and say, let's let's we you know let's buy some books and um, send my friends there. Some of the other guys from the meetup group go to the bookshop, and we buy the odd book, and it keeps a little trickle trickle of sats coming in through his door and. If the bookshop ever closes um, or changes hands or whatever, then um, then maybe you know the next owner will say, "Well, I don't want to use this extra. I don't want to lose the extra revenue that this was bringing me. I, I, I I've got to carry on accepting Bitcoin now because I'm I'm chopping off a certain percentage of my income if I if I take that bit, Bitcoin accepted here sticker out of the window, you know. So it will keep it going. So it's it the merchant adoption." Bitcoin meetups are really very solidly together as two two things that have to grow together, and and by growing them together, we really we really um you know that it becomes greater than the sum of its parts. It's it's a, becomes a hugely powerful thing. Yeah. So this this is honestly you you chatting has in inspired me to try and focus more local because. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people they they try to go big, right? They try yeah, to go, let's get let's get the globe, and they f- totally forget their neighbors. They yeah. totally forget that there might be a guy down the street that is that is all in on this and is just so aligned with your your values and what you would love to see accomplished with Bitcoin. And you're just you're, you're oblivious to them, 
and, yeah. and you're walking past each other every single day on the street. You have no idea. And I That's think it. yeah. it's, it's important to have those people that, that say like, Hey, the, you know, to be the beacon in the local community for people to gravitate towards, because this is again, the, the, again, Peter, you, you pointed out that, that term gravitating towards it's that's, that's, that's what it is. And, and to be that person, anybody that's watching that, watching this right now, you can be that person in your, your local community where, where the people that are, are on your wavelength or starting to align with it, gravitate towards you because they see the signal through the noise and they, yeah. and they say, Hey, I, I feel like I need more of this, or I need to contribute to this or, or learn from this. They will come to it if they see value. And eventually it's my belief that that will more or less be everyone. And at that point it's no longer necessary because everybody gets it, but mm. to be that early beacon, to mm. be that early signal in your community, in your local community, that can, that, I mean, that's what really makes the difference. You can, you can have exactly. these people that are, you can have, again, like you, you can have podcasts like this, but like when, when you're in the community chatting with people, talking about your day-to-day -day life with your neighbor and saying, Hey, here's, here's the problems I'm running into. And, I think this solves some of them through this. This is where you're going to get the most kind of synergy with, again, somebody in your local community that says, hey, I mean, I, I live in the same area as you. Of course, I'm going to probably experience the same life hurdles that I need to get over. And I see what you're presenting me and, you know, that kind of lines up that, that makes sense to me. So work within your local communities. Cause that's where you're most likely to encounter people that again, absolutely gravitate yeah. towards the signal. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I agree. It, it's where the libertarian kind of philosophy of, of Bitcoin kind of comes into it, where it's, you know, it's that localization, um, yes. really looking after your, your local community. And there's no better way to look after your community than to introduce it to bitcoin and get get that circular economy going um yeah. and it's it's you know it's like it's like the telephone as well you know when the, the telephone first started and you've got a, only a few people that have telephones there's not that many different connections you can make but when everyone's got a phone phone everybody can call everybody and check everyone's okay and and now um you know, with Bitcoin, we can we can make those connections. Yeah. Um, and once you've got that community, you can make those connections within the community. Um, and and most people can kind of operate within their own community if 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 they yeah. you know you don't need to. Uh, it doesn't matter about the rest of the world, you know. Yeah. Within a 10, 15 mile radius of your of your house, as long as everybody was accepting Bitcoin, you'd be fine. You'd be on a Bitcoin standard. So if you can just yeah. Um, orange pill your your community um that's that's all you need to do as a, as an individual and then yeah. if we all did that oh. we're there yeah it's incredible i <laughs> this is a fun question in the in the comments here any opsec tick tips for <laughs> attending st uh, starting a meetup i mean like if you're in <laughs> okay so let's 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 put this in, in the context of like online OPSEC is different from like local meetup OPSEC. So yeah. if, if there's, <laughs> if there's a spook that has decided to infiltrate your local community <laughs> Bitcoin meetup, then I mean, maybe that guy deserves the few callers that he gets. <laughs> but You don't but need to like, give your name though, do you? Yeah. Um, like you, know. you can, you can just show up. And you don't have to say a lot and you can forge individual one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationships. Like it, I think we've got to balance it out, right? Like the goal here is, is, is allowing people to, to freely transact between each other on a peer to peer basis and just live their lives and allow money to take on the form of simply doing something that you're good at storing your value reliably and then being able to transact with your peers.
Like that's mm -hmm. when you get to the crux of it, that's what it is. And so, I mean, if, if, if you get into a realm where you're too paranoid to show up in a group of people and, and have a conversation, <laughs> then, yeah. then, then I'll mean, yeah, tell you a great, a great example of what, of, of that was when we were at the Edinburgh conference on this Saturday night, um, we were in the uh, brew dog bar mm -hmm. and Adam back was in there and he was just standing there chatting with everybody. Like Adam's I mean, incredible. This okay. is like one of the OGs obviously of Bitcoin. And he was in there talking to everybody and I was watching him and he's standing by the door and he was saying goodbye to people. And he had a little backpack on him and he just wandered off into the night by himself <laughs> back to his Airbnb or whatever. And I was thinking, Adam Back is just wandering off. You know, if if I'm worried about my obsec, yeah, exactly. Adam Back is on the in white paper, you know, and he just wandered off by himself into the night. Everyone in this bar has watched him disappear. I mean, he doesn't give a shit. It's, so why the f should I? <laughs> I'm so glad yeah, so. you brought this one up, Ben, because I was going to highlight it. As soon as it popped up, I was just like, we we gotta we gotta discuss this. Because I think there's there's this there's this thing in Bitcoin about this five dollar wrench attack that just doesn't happen. And I think that's what this question is alluding to. And I think we statistically we can count on one hand the number of five dollar wrench attacks. I think there have been three maybe three physical attacks on Bitcoiners in all the time that Bitcoin, Bitcoin has existed. And I think, I, I'm not sure why we have this sort of fear of $5 entry tax. Um, but yeah, I think we've got to balance it out. So so yeah, to who, who was that who put it out? I can't remember who, yeah. who put the question out. But yeah, get out there, get out there, meet fellow Bitcoiners. Because it's, like I said earlier, it's good for the soul. You, it, the amount of collaboration you're going to do, it's going to blow your mind. Um, it's, when, it's, when you meet other Bitcoiners, you, you, like like we said earlier, you can have conversations. You're going to cut through the shit. You're going to get straight to the chase, and you're gonna you're gonna make great friends and do fantastic business. Look look what's happened to myself, Pete, James, and Simon. You know we've started up these businesses out of nothing. We've just yeah. gone. We've we've met, and within minutes, we're just like, oh, that's a really good idea. How do we do that? Because <laughs> we're in that space at the moment in Bitcoin where it's still really early. So everyone here. It, are early adopters really and we're so we're doers so we're, we're people who want to get stuff done we want we want movement we 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 want to see progress so go and meet other bitcoiners because you'll be you, you will be inspired as pete said earlier you'll be inspired by meeting other bitcoiners and who knows what might come out of that so please don't be scared the the the, the upside is far greater than the downside we're going it, to a Bitcoin and, meetup. Go on, and if you're, really, if you're really worried, you know, just, just wear a green gimp suit, you know, as, <laughs> as <laughs> exemplified by that famous Austrian-German GG. <laughs> you know, you'd be, you're probably more likely to come a cropper just because of your green gimp suit, frankly, than uh, <laughs> you're probably more likely to, <laughs> yeah. to get a tap like a like, weirdo. <laughs> with, with security, you, know, you really you really have to consider, it's a bit like risk, isn't it? There's perceived risk and actual risk. And, you know, it's not really about picking up security tips, I have to say. I don't think anyway. It's more about being realistic about your security situation. So mm -hmm. if you are serious about it, write down your threat model. You know, what are your threats? And and be realistic about how big they are, how small they are, and which ones you can mitigate and which ones not. And 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 just, yeah, just balance it out a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to point out that Simon, you called the bottom of the bear market there. It sort of slipped everyone by. You actually said, "Yeah, we're at the bottom of the bear market." Yeah, I'm calling. So it. you you heard it here first from Simon. <laughs> from Hobby I I've got to cool. say, okay, so it, we're on the topic about Adam back, and I've I've got to give Adam once again a shout out because <laughs> you think like, oh, Adam back was mentioned in the white paper and his work directly directly contributed to the creation of bitcoin and you think <laughs> like the the you know you 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 if you're lucky enough to be at an event where he's in attendance you think oh geez like do i even bother going up to this guy and talking to him is he gonna have time for me i saw him at Bitcoin 2019. And this was probably at a point where, I mean, he had no idea who the fuck I was, obviously, like, like who would. And I walked up to him and I said, hey, man, I just 
you know, wanted to say thank you for your work and your contribution to, you know, what ended up being Bitcoin. And I, I don't even know if I really had any good questions for him. I just, I was like, I would love to engage in a conversation with Adam Beck. And so I walked up to him. He's just by himself. He's looking at like a mural on the wall in, you know, in the midst of a Bitcoin bear market. And I go up to him and I start chatting. And I had just been reading a book on, um, on social cues on uh, uh, again, like kind of, I, I don't really know the, the, the name for the topic, but like interpreting different social cues, trying like social engineering, stuff like that. And, and part of it was interpreting like how, if you're talking to somebody like what, what their uh, reactions and, and how they're reacting to your conversation. And they, they were talking about how, like, you know, if you're talking to somebody, if they're trying to exit a conversation or they're like, Hey, I've, you know, I probably got other shit to do. You'll see them angle their feet kind of away from the conversation, right? You'll, you'll, you'll see one toe be pointing out and their, their, their body will be, their body language. They'll be open as a way to exit or potentially invite other people into the conversation, but to, to leave. And whereas if they're engaged, then their body language will be direct towards you, feet facing towards you. And this was Adam back to, you know, he didn't, he, he owed me zero time. He owed me zero engagement. He owed me absolutely nothing. He literally built the foundation for what would become Bitcoin. And I'm some idiot coming up asking, I'm sure what were absolutely asinine questions. <laughs> and he literally, he was enjoying whatever he was looking at and doing. And he just turned and the focal point was on me. And not only that, but he had no inclination to leave. He sat there and I, you know, he sat there and he chatted with me for half an hour and people just kind of meandered up and just listened and just joined in the car. And all of a sudden there was just a group of people having a conversation and, and he just, he was more than content to just have a conversation with some person who he had no idea who they were, what they were doing. He just knew that they were interested in Bitcoin and he just sat there and he just chatted. And uh, I think that's one of those moments that I'm going to be forever grateful for. Um, I've, I've, I've met him and chatted with him since, but it was just one of those weird instances where I'm like, especially in the context of reading that the book that I was reading at the time, I was like, man, he doesn't give a fuck to leave. He's just super happy just having a conversation. And it was, mm. it was, uh, you know, I, I kept that here and it was important to me. Um, yeah. And I think uh, I think a lot of Bitcoiners would do well to lead by that example um, and engage with people that want to have those conversations because mm -hmm. they're even even if it's not on the scale of chatting with the guy that was cited in the Bitcoin white paper, it's still equally important to whoever you may be chatting with. And I think we can all glean that from mm -hmm. Adam's example. Mm. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, the organizers of the Bitcoin Collective um, at Edinburgh, the Bitcoin Conference in Edinburgh, and all the speakers, because not only Adam, but all the speakers were so approachable. So well done to the guys mm. for making such a, a great homely conference where yeah. everyone had access to everyone. I, I've never yeah. been to a conference where there's been virtually a non-existent hierarchy. Everyone was just chatting to yeah. each other. Like we say, Adam was in and out. Fossey was there. You know, every, yeah. every, you, you can chat to anyone. It, it was beautiful. Yeah. And that sort of sort of symbolized to me the sort of flat hierarchy and collaborative nature of Bitcoin. But yeah, one wonderful, wonderful yeah. story, Ben. The, the night that we arrived, um, when um, me and my wife went, we got there on the Thursday night and we put our bags in the Airbnb and James said, oh, come and meet us in that, the standing order, wasn't it, the pub that we went to. Yeah. And um, and I and we rocked up there thinking it, it was just going to be James and we were going to sit down and have some food. <laughs> And I walked into the pub and Peter McCormack came over and said, oh, mate, how's, how's it going? Because I met Peter 
quite a few times now from the from the football matches. And then I'm looking around, I'm thinking, holy shit, I'm, I'm Samson Mao is there, and Greg Foss, and Larry Lepard, and <laughs> Natalie Brunel. And I was like, oh my God. And uh, and we were just in the pub drinking, and there's all these, all the speakers were just all around us, and, and um, we could just chat to them. And it was, there's no VIP area. It was really, mm. it was just cool. We were just yeah. in amongst the, the podcasting um, superstars, you know. It it's great. it's it's weird because you gradually start to realize that every person is just yeah some other person, right? Like they're just yeah, and and the only reason that anybody assigns notoriety to people, and uh, and this is outside of like if you're building amazing stuff. That's that's a totally different ball game because I I don't build shit. <laughs> I I see cool shit and I test it out <laughs> and then I film myself doing it after I screwed up a bunch of times. And like a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, let's t- talk about cool shit or let's whatever it may be. But I think a lot of these people that that you realize, you know that that we we get into this mindset of oh that's really cool that this person is chatting with us or is taking time the reality of is it is that you know they had a certain set of interests they did whatever they did they came into bitcoin it naturally grabbed their attention and they just happened to have their attention grabbed sooner than you mm. and and so or they happened to have their attention grabbed and they then went on to do something that you happen to appreciate. But like at the end of the day, it's all just people that have an inclination to gravitate towards a tool that can kind of level the playing field for humanity. And I think that's, that's a pretty mutual thing across the globe. And eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get to a point where that's a rather unremarkable thing. Yeah. Which in, in one way will be a little sad, but in another way, what it's going to do for humanity as a whole is going to be incredible. And yeah, you'll be able to look back and, you know, there'll be the notable people. There'll be the mystery that is Satoshi. There'll be Hal. There'll be people like Adam back. There'll be people that built incredible things for people to use. But at the end of the day, the reality will be that it just took people different amounts of time to realize that this tool results in the most prosperous flourishing environment for humanity. And that's, you know, the path that we're all going down eventually, even the people that hate Bitcoin right now, some of them may never come around to it. It may just be outside of their life cycle. It may just be that they're too entrenched in th- their values that were bestowed upon them th- from the previous generation, from their parents, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, like we're all born as a blank slate and, and our current beliefs and values are a culmination of how we were raised and, and the situation in which we were raised. And, and so you can't really necessarily fault people for that. And, and I think it's in our best interest to kind of present our best argument and allow people to gravitate towards whatever makes the most sense. And in the end, I, I think that's Bitcoin. I hope it's Bitcoin and I hope that I'm right. And that it results in a society that's more, Again, more of a, a a level playing field for everyone. Absolutely, yeah. agreed. I think <laughs> I think this is a good place to round it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to yeah, but um, I don't know. For some for some reason, I mean, you obviously you're talking about sovereign individuals, and for some reason it makes me think of Julian Assange because he's a Bitcoiner. Yeah, and I just think we need to remember that and his situation, you know, periodically because it's, yeah, it's important. It's, I, I agree. I, I, I did get to meet um, some of his family members in, in Miami a year and a half ago. And that was 
I, I, again, I can't, I can't even imagine. Um, I, I hope that Bitcoin fixes this. I, I, I fear that it, I fear that it will fix it, but not soon enough for some of the repercussions of our kind of fiat denominated lives to kind of take their toll on, on the current generation. But I'm hopeful. And I think, I, I think there's a lot to be hopeful for in the future. And I, I, you know, um, the, the sooner we can get there, the better. I, I think that the way that we get there sooner is what we've been talking about local and yeah. people, yeah. people, a lot of people are thinking too big picture mm. and where can you as an individual have the most impact? Where can you today get people? And it doesn't matter how many people you're not, you're not trying to rack up numbers. You just, you want to make that connection. You want to find that person that's most in tune with your wavelength and say, Hey, this could be helpful for you. Maybe even just you and I can form a relationship where you, you, you're creating something I value. I can compensate that with you in something that actually accurately reflects the value given um, and start there. That's yeah. all you need to do. Solid yeah. grassroots stuff. Yeah. I, comp I completely agree, Bren. You said the sooner we can get there, the better. And you also said earlier, be that person in the community. So for me, um, the famous Gandhi quote sort of epitomizes that be the change you want to see in the world. And as Bitcoiners, we mm. want to see Bitcoin be successful. Um, yeah. So yeah, do that. Be, um, be, be the change output. Yeah. You want to see <laughs> the UTXO. Yeah. <laughs> be the UTXO you want to see in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to round it out here, guys. I think this is a great place to cap it. Um, so I'm going to do a, a, a quick round. Uh, again, we'll, we'll keep it brief, like a minute or so each. Um, but just any, anything that you <laughs> That's want. That's not possible, Ben. Yeah, no. <laughs> a few Bitcoin. hours later. Um, <laughs> but I, I will ask you just like any, like a quick final thought. And if you have it, I'll challenge you to offer up a, uh, a recommendation of really anything that's ha helped you along your Bitcoin journey. It could be an app, a podcast, uh, a, just a, 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 a something to explore, a line of thought, really, really anything like a book, a, a video. It, it doesn't matter. Just something that you found useful in your Bitcoin journey that you think could benefit some people. Um, so again, I'll, I'll round it out here. I will say... The theme of today seems to be reach people that you can reach, right? <coughs> like cast, cast the net where you're going to catch the most fish. <coughs> um, and so start local. If you have a bigger reach, then go for it. If you don't start local, that's where the differences are made. Um, and so find those people that you can connect with that maybe share your values that maybe are in tune with your values and don't even realize that Bitcoin is a solution to their woes um, and start there. Uh, in terms of recommendations, I think this was my recommendation a couple of weeks ago, but I'm going to reiterate it. <coughs> um, go local, go to your meetup, go to your local meetup, search, go on Google, whatever your city is followed by Bitcoin. If nothing comes up, make it, make it yourself and it will grow. I think Simon, the, again, the, the numbers that you were quoting, you went from seven meetups in the UK to in the high twenties. That's incredible in a, in a year in a bear market, mm -hmm. if that can happen in a bear market, imagine what can be help, uh, you know, happen in the midst of a bull. And I know that some of those people are transient, but imagine the the the, the seeds that can be yeah. sown there, and the growth because it's not it's not like the the peak number of people. It's the like the the moving averages right yeah. that are important. And so I yeah yeah it's a strong foundation that we're making now yeah. in this this period yeah yeah and That's it's the, the strongest important. I've ever seen to be honest. Mm, I think it was there. I think it was such fertile ground. It just 
somebody needed to get it and i'm not saying i did it all but it was <laughs> it had to it had to be um people needed to just start making the connections because and and it just all started to slot together yeah. those those people were already there just waiting to be connected yeah you know exactly so well yeah okay so let's uh <laughs> let's go down the line really quick i'm gonna go to chris first um cool. any quick final thought recommendations go ahead uh, quick final thoughts. A uh, super huge thank you for having us on, Ben. Uh, fantastic to have this platform to let everyone know what we do and just to rip on Bitcoin and just chat Bitcoin for hours. It's fantastic. So thank you very much. Real privilege. So thank you for having us on. Um, recommendations. So I'm, I'm going to, my recommendation, I'm going to hop back to what I just said, uh, the Gandhi quote, be the change you want to see in the world. Follow that quote. Um, for For me, um, the cornerstone at this moment in time um, for Bitcoin success is merchant adoption. Um, we're, this is a monetary revolution at the moment, um, and the repercussions of that are huge, as we were discussing earlier with some disagreement as to what those repercussions might be, but let's not go back there. Um, but yeah, the, the repercussions are huge. Um, I think... I think Merchant adoption is a cornerstone for this. So what my recommendation is a call to action um, is to say, when you next go to the shops, and apologies for those who've heard me say this before. And I, uh, well, I won't apologize. Um, when you next go to the shops, say these four simple words. Do you accept Bitcoin? Now, the likelihood is, I'll go no. And you just carry on with your day. You pay with your fiat shitcoin and you carry on. You don't have to do anything else. You might get a weird look. You just carry on. You just get your fiat card ready. But by asking that question, you are sowing a seed at ground root level. And if we all do that as Bitcoiners, if every time we go to the shops, sooner or later, people are going, what is this Bitcoin? I need to look at this. Or those shop owners are just going, hmm, maybe I should start accepting this Bitcoin. And maybe one day some a shop owner or uh, an employee will go, huh, how, how do we do that? And that's your door in. Wallet Satoshi, if it's a one-man band. Or if you're in the UK and um, it's a bigger business, contact us and we'll, we'll speak to them about it. Ask those four words. It's a really, for me, it's a really powerful, slow orange pill. Much more, as I said earlier, much more powerful than trying to orange pill individuals at a personal individual level. We're getting, this is our sort of Trojan horse for Bitcoin success. Um, and it opens conversations. And as I said earlier, um, creates collaborations. Who knows where those conversations might go? Um, I, I'm, I'm loving my new tagline, normalize, don't evangelize Bitcoin. Um, and to, to just sort of highlight that's, that, that new tagline, um, I'm going to talk about, and James and Sai, you'll be familiar with this little story. We, we've met a, an internet OG um, when we first met. And I didn't realize, but when, when the internet first came about, the newbies or the o, or, or rather the OGs of the internet had meetups, just like Bitcoiners. They all used to meet up to, uh, on, on, on online forums and to talk about the internet and how they could make it better. And they were called interneters. Isn't that interesting? We're... We, we're Bitcoiners, and we meet up to talk about Bitcoin. No one talks about, no one calls anyone interneters anymore. We're just users of the internet. It's a phrase that we, we don't use. So hopefully one day, Bitcoiners won't exist because we'll all just be using Bitcoin. Normalize, don't evangelize is what I'm saying. Um, so spend your Bitcoin. Um, go, go ask for other. And if they say, yes, great, spend your Bitcoin. Use Remember the, the title of the white paper, it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So, so use it. Um, don't spend the ultimate shitcoin, USD or Great British Pounds. If you have the option <laughs> of paying in Bitcoin or USD or Great British Pounds, if you choose your fiat currency, in my mind, you're shitcoining. So spend the Bitcoin. Otherwise, you're just propagating the use of a shit coin yes. let's let's encourage the use of bitcoin and and to loop it back if you have a bulk card use a bulk card if you don't have a bulk card 
go get a bulk card. It's great. It's now thanks to Pete. It's now open source. Anyone can have a bulk card. It's self-sovereign, self-custodial. And if you want to be really flash, I'm gonna I'm gonna loop this back to who was it? It was Chair Force Hoddle. Chair Force Hoddle was asking, mm -hmm. was asking about laserized cards. So what we've done just to finish off, um, we have taken Pete's uh, open source bolt card and we've created laserized cards. So I'm gonna show you this is point and sale device. I'm gonna come a little bit closer. So this is this is a, a blank bolt card that you can you can buy from us. So it's blank. You can do what you like with it. You can link it to your node, link it to your wallet. Pete will explain more if, if you want, if we want to talk for another two hours about Bitcoin and bolt cards. Boltcard.org. Um, Boltcard.org. Yeah, go to boltcard.org. Um, and when you pay, this is what happens. <laughs> you get laser eyes when you pay. We, we've got a number of different designs. So we've, of course, got the honey badger. I'm not sure which one this is. Honey badger. A good white one. Eye. A good, a good honey badger. We've got the naughty honey, honey badger Beautiful. with the red eye. Ben, we, I did send one out to you. We do <laughs> selfies as well. Um, so you can get your own face printed on. And we did that for the guys, for the speakers in Edinburgh. And ben, I did post, I have posted one out to you. But I'm, I've been, I'm, I've been, I'm eagerly awaiting. Honestly, I've been, I've been checking the mail every day. <laughs> I've been so pissed off because it's been delayed at every stage and I've been pinging off emails. There, and there was a storm here customs. like two days ago. So oh. it's, it, I can see it's currently stuck in customs. It arrived at something like 3.15 this morning at your local local customs place. Oh, we, we got time. We got time. Like I leave um, I leave early Wednesday morning, but I think, okay. I think I got time. I Honestly, the video of Jeff Booth seeing it was like, <laughs> <laughs> what better marketing are you gonna get than Jeff Booth losing his shit over a laser eye picture of him tapping? <laughs> so yeah, to, to round up, yeah, go go ask your local merchant if they accept Bitcoin. If they do, great, fantastic. If not, you've started them on hopefully an orange <laughs> um, billing journey. And go get a bulk card, laserize.cards if you want one of you're, our you're, You've already got people asking, can I get one with yellow on it? <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna want the custom cards is is, yeah. is gonna yeah. be the yeah. Uh, Con request. contact us for custom cards. We can do them as well. And Jeff Booth assured me he's going self sovereign with his bulk card. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh Peter, I'm gonna go to you uh final thought recommendation go ahead sure um well i like what chris was saying about uh the internet and bitcoin because there is to me there's a lot of similarities they're both protocols the internet is obviously a communication protocol and bitcoin's a value communication protocol so you know the adoption is going to be similar in some ways it seems to be faster with bitcoin anyway in terms of interesting things to watch i would say with laserized cards we only accept Bitcoin. This is this is James's idea. One of James's excellent ideas. We don't accept Bitcoin. We don't take, we don't accept fear or any of that. Whatever. Just Bitcoin. None of that and shit coinery. So, yeah, none of, none of that stuff. So, but obviously, to some extent, we've got to put paperwork in. So James is dealing with that situation, thankfully. And um, for me, it was super easy setting up the 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 e-commerce store. And well, Rob did the e-commerce store, but setting up BTC Pay server just super easy you know nothing like uh fiat stuff at all far far, far easier and um, but the most interesting thing is going to be when after say six months we've been going about a month but after you know a year or whatever when all the forms have gone in and we've done a whole cycle of tax and whatever all that stuff um then uh i hope you don't mind me saying james but you james is going to write about it and, and do a blog post and i think that's going to be really important because you know I just want a Bitcoin only business. I'm not interested in this fear stuff. I want a worldwide business that I can sell worldwide, you know, simple Bitcoin. But obviously, I've still got to do the paperwork. So, so long as that, I think that'll be simpler than everyone imagines, hopefully. And I think James will get to the bottom of it for us. So, that'll be a that'll be a massive step forward. Um, and in terms of, you know, books and articles and stuff, Price of Tomorrow obviously is brilliant, and Block Size Wars, I would say. Cool. Those are awesome recommendations. Again, Block Size Wars, I, I, I think is 
it's it's gonna be a <laughs> it's gonna be a history book i think it's gonna be like years from now give it a few decades and it's gonna be like kids read about the block size wars <laughs> it's especially be- if you're around in that era i mean it's super interesting to hear the inside story isn't it oh yeah like reading it back because you know you get this kind of superficial this is what i was reading on reddit at mm-hmm. the time and then you you go into oh this these are the meetings that were happening and you kind of realize and for those that weren't around it's absolutely necessary learning like to to understand what was at stake and what mm-hmm. was happening in the background um and again jeff booth like the beautiful part about his book is it's not about Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. It's that he recognized Bitcoin as a possible solution in one of the final chapters. And mm-hmm. that has gone on to form the thesis of kind of where he is now. It's it's he recognized the 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 fragile state of where we are and how we got here. Um, it's not a Bitcoin book. It's it's a reality book. And it's very valuable. And if anything is something that can orange pill a person, it's that. So, yeah. Um, We'll jump to James. James, final thought, recommendation. Go ahead. Yeah, um, actually, thanks, Peter. We we hadn't mentioned that, actually. But both, yeah, both Bridge to Bitcoin and Laserized Cars are Bitcoin-only businesses. I'm an accountant, so I have to do do the money. Uh, We don't have bank accounts, and we never will have bank accounts. Uh, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah, uh, we we have to work out a few things, but that's <laughs> but that's that's the way we're doing it. So uh, that's the commitment. Bitcoin only. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's that. And and I I was just thinking about my recommendations. What's the best stuff that I've watched or read over the last two and a half years, three years, getting on three years now? It's a tricky one because it's a long journey and there's a lot of stuff in there. But I like I like the stuff that like Price of Tomorrow, where as you're saying, Ben, it wasn't Bitcoin barely featured and, until the end. But I sort of I, I particularly like books that were written therefore before 2008. So books and and one that I'm only halfway through, and another one that I'm only about a quarter of the way through. Uh, so I'm going to give those two up, which is a bit hard a bit hard to say because I obviously haven't read them and they're not as inspiring as something like i don't know gg's 21 lessons or you know especially the one on time i love that i've read it and listened to it countless times i just love it because it's physics and it's maths and it's weird and you know loads of great thoughts but 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 i like um your guido holzman's the ethics of money production which was published in 2007 and is a deep history in money and the ethics of money uh looking largely at the Christian tradition, but also touching on Islam too. And so when you find that there's a Bishop or Resmi in the 12th century talking about good money and bad money, it suddenly makes you think, oh, maybe I'm, I'm not that weird. And this isn't all about technology. The, the, the core principles of what we're talking about is, is humanity and it's deep history. That's the one, yeah. Um, so I'd recommend that. Uh, and also um, this is the one that I'm only part way through at the moment and that's um the sovereign individual um so it's hard for me to recommend it but i can tell already that it's very very interesting and the fact that it was written in was it 1997 yeah that's yeah um is is remarkable i mean i i feel that uh, give them some allowances that you know i feel that their timing was um you know not going to be exact and they couldn't have anticipated how what they were predicting would actually go through a doom loop to start with is what i feel we've been through of centralization Mm -hmm. um but they couldn't have anticipated that bitcoin would be invented and that that would be the savior of this new doom loop so there's a kind of little bit of not quite straightforward but um very very interesting the things that they were thinking um way back then so yeah you're on oh, mute, Ben. Ben. You're on mute, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're having what we call a mare today, dropping. Yeah, stuff. I'm, not, I'm not used to it. Yeah, geez, I'm, <laughs> I'm like dropping ice water on my nuts. I'm 
I, it just, we're, we're, we're holding you. We're holding you up. Ben. Backstage just yellow. Like you. Ben just isomus himself again. <laughs> nope. I dropped my phone on my keyboard and then dropped my battery out of my camera. Really winning tonight. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, I was just saying that Sovereign Individual, fantastic recommendation. There's, it's, it's funny. It's unfortunate that, that one of the first uh, things that they mention, they're, they're talking in and around like um, – uh, this this was written pre 9 11 so like there's no way they could have anticipated that so like some of the stuff in and around that they couldn't have possibly seen coming but they, there's like a couple misses there in and around like the trajectory of where that was going um but nonetheless holy crap the how prescient that book was in and around the implications of a digital age and they allude to a digital money but i don't think that they just fully placed the importance of the digital money on the trajectory of what they were hmm. kind of anticipating. And so the digital money is, is what really puts the wheels in motion for what they're talking about in this book of the ability of an individual to truly be sovereign and the ability of somebody to be like that, that flag theory of, hmm. of, uh, the the idea of nations, instead of treating their constituents as their subjects, treating them as their customers and having to effectively say, hey, come here because for your effort and the small taxes that we do charge, you will receive the following. And that's the world that we're leading into. Um, and that's very interesting. So I won't take up too much time here. I'm going to jump to Simon and then I'm going to grab your final thoughts and recommendations. Um, yeah, well, I'll be quick. And I, I, I think just um, to sort of say to people, the recommendation would be to think about what you can contribute to Bitcoin without actually, um, I mean, if, if you don't code or, don't do any of those kinds of things. That's not all that you, the only way that you can contribute to Bitcoin. There's so many ways. We talked about the um, the BTC map project. There's there's all sorts of other um, smaller things as well. There was the the uh, Bitcoin for small businesses leaflet, which we had a bit of involvement in um, making, which was an open source project. There it is. Chris has got it there. Um, we kind of branded our own little version of it with Bridge to Bitcoin on, but there's one for every country. We were talking to some guys the other day from New Zealand um, and suggested it to them. And there's it turned out there was no leaflet for new zealand so they're now going to create the um new zealand specific version of that um but yeah if there's a version for every country um if i mean if you go on there and there's not a, a version for your country then create your country and print it out you can download um that leaflet from our website bridge to bitcoin.com um you can go on there and print it out and um go and uh, walk around your neighborhood and drop the leaflet into um, as many businesses as possible and speak to them. Um, so that's, that's something that anybody can do. Um, so, you know, get out there and, and, and if you are, and, and the one final thing is that if you are interested in merchant adoption, um, we have, and this is actually really new, but just a few days ago, we started a discord um, server for people that are because we've had a lot of people that have come to us that are interested in merchant adoption and just don't know maybe where to start so that so we've we've created this um kind of a hub i suppose for people to come and share ideas um we're going to do some flow charts i think on, on you know like if you're actually in the store and they say well we um the merchant wants to hold bitcoin or doesn't want to hold bitcoin you know there's lots of different decisions that you kind of got to make in which kind of option that you do you, do you suggest to the merchant so um there's all sorts of things that we can talk about in this um in this discord server um so if you go to our website um there's a link section and um there's links to the discord group and um that's another way that you can contribute to bitcoin adoption we we have a mention of volunteers we we it's not just ourselves who yeah. who are bridge to bitcoin we have a host of mm. we have a whole load of volunteers across the uk who mm. do what we do at a local level sort of 
looping back to what you were saying, Ben, mm. about it being ground roots local. So yeah, big shout out to our volunteers. Um, I won't I won't name you all by name because um, some of you wanted to re- remain anonymous as best as you can. Um, but yeah, big shout out to our volunteers. So yeah, I completely agree with you, Simon. Thanks. Yep. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Um, again, I, I, I think the overarching uh, theme of this pod has been local, local, local. Do what you can. Reach who you can. And sometimes that's your neighbor. Sometimes that's your community. Sometimes that's your city. Sometimes that's your country. Sometimes that's the world. And that just depends. But all of it is incredi- incredibly meaningful. So um, don't just sit by and wait. I, again, the Gandhi quote, be the change you want to see in the world. Um, go do it now. And, uh, and you can. BTCmap.org. Go to your local meetups. Meet people, find out what they do for a living, ask if they'll accept Bitcoin. They're there. They probably already want to do it. And if you're not accepting Bitcoin, do it now. Sign yourself up for btcmap.org. Meet other people, create a community locally amongst yourselves and grow from there. Because you as a community will have more reach than you as an individual. There you go. Yep. Gentlemen, I've got to say thank you so much. It is you guys are you you came with the receipts you showed up you had so many great points to talk about uh this was a hell of a rip we went for three hours it is now 1 a.m for you guys it's only 7 p.m for me so (laughs) i I would say that we didn't even do a deep dive on stuff we sort of touched on things didn't we we we, yeah. we skim the surface, but I feel like I I, I was quite restrained. I really wanted to sort of yeah. get into uh, those Well, there's so much you can dive into, right? I, I know. Mm-hmm. I I would love to go on for three more yeah. hours. But I'm I'll sure drink two pints of beer and I'm dying for a pee. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sure you'll yeah, you'll listen you know, to this. I'm gonna first is the bathroom and then is a refill. I brought just enough whiskey to make it through. I did <laughs> not anticipate three hours. I I brought a little bit extra. It's all gone now. Um, <laughs> But nonetheless, I really enjoyed this. Um, I I hope I'm going to see you guys in person at some point. Um, mm. But do you, I, I don't know well, you when, guys. when you come over to the UK to meet your mate, who's uh, we'll we'll come down for a, for a meet up with with you yeah. and him, and uh, you know, and and bring some more people. And uh, I yeah. I, w- I would love that. I think um, so. Next summer, I am going to be going to. Uh, to Italy for a while, but on the way there, about like since I'm across, <laughs> it's funny. As as soon as you're traveling to the other side of the globe, all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense to stop over in a place that's halfway in between. So, <laughs> um, so I may be making some effort, and I think that at the end of the trip, uh, surf and Bitcoin is likely going to be happening near the end of August. At which point, if I'm already in France, maybe I make the trip up to England um, or on the way there. So we shall see. I don't know, but I do anticipate at some point being in the UK. So if I do, I know who to talk to. And it'll be in a pub or a restaurant. Oh, I don't do it. But take Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Bitcoin. Yeah, I do a not Bitcoin know. only holiday. You will yeah. not be spending any dirty fiat. Yeah, exactly. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Um, all of your Twitter handles are linked down below, as well as all of the kind of the associated accounts that we've been talking to: Bolt Card, uh, BTC Map, all of that. Bridge to Bitcoin, everything. It's all down below. Um, so, everybody that's watching or that has been watching, go follow those Twitter accounts, and then through. Uh, proxy you can kind of find everything that's been going on with these guys uh gentlemen again i can't thank you enough for your time and for staying up late uh even though you're across the pond and you're all welcome back anytime thank you guys so much thank, thank you, you ben. Ben. Thanks, thank ben. you very cheers. much cheers man thank cheers Bye. thanks guys see ya right. everybody that's watching thank you so much this was a hell of a rip i've got to say uk bitcoiners they bring the heat they bring the signal It was an awesome, awesome time. I'm going to say it again. Go follow them all. All the Twitter accounts are down below. Um, Bridge to Bitcoin, again, BTC Map, Bolt Card, all that stuff. 
down there and follow their individual accounts as well. These guys are awesome. Um, I'm super glad that these guys made, made it on behind the scenes. Honestly, we we're trying to like organize it and everything. And we had some changes of dates and everything. And the, they were just so gracious in trying to figure out when <laughs> with my clusterfuck of a schedule being like a parent of two children and traveling and everything. They've been nothing but accommodating. So again, Chris, Peter, Simon, uh, James, uh, again, like I, 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 I can't say enough. Thank you guys so much for, um, for being here and, uh, and being part of the show. And I can't wait to be the, in the UK with you guys. Uh, yeah. Follow them all down below. Everybody that's still watching. Thank you guys so much for being here. Of course, if you want to help with the show, like, subscribe, share, all those things really important. You can help the previously mentioned sponsors, CoinKite, ShakePay, Leaden, BitRefill, Bill Foddle. They're all down here. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can actually a couple things I'm just going to mention. If you're in LA for Pacific Bitcoin, hit up Toxic Happy Hour. That pleb party, holy shit, 300 plus people. Let's see. What is it at now? Uh, attendees. It's still refreshing, you guys. 314 attendees and counting. Come on down. It's going to be crazy. This is before the event even starts happening. Uh, the event is Thursday, Friday. I am then going to be there doing my cold card workshop on the Saturday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's a four-hour deep dive. You will be an expert walking out of there with your cold card. So be sure to check it out, btcsessions.ca slash events. Limited tickets left, and there's only like 15 spots available. So get in while you can. Um, on the local front, the theme of this episode was all local. If you're in Calgary, this is where I live. I am in Calgary. Get on it, guys. Go to the YYC Bitcoin only Bitcoin meetup. The next one I'm going to be at because I'm out of town for a lot of November. I'm going to be at the December 6th meetup. And that is the YYC Bitcoin only Bitcoin year in review. I'm excited for that one. That should be fun. I'm going to stick around for drinks afterwards. Come down Calgary YYC Bitcoin only. You can find it on meetup.com. And again, uh, if you're in LA, hit up that. Uh, my workshop and the toxic happy hour. Let's round it out. Thank you guys so much. If you really liked what you saw, drop me a Bitcoin tip at my strike page, strike.me slash BTC sessions. You can head there, type in any amount you want, hit the tip button. You'll see a lightning invoice or a regular Bitcoin QR code. If you tap the arrow to the right with that, I'm out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Hold all the Bitcoin.